This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors. Any day, of the, yeah, any day of the week. Is that their, is that their slogan? Yeah, swing any day, any day of the week. week. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. To the show. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies, we talk comics, we talk TV shows, we talk trailers that aren't good. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always is my co-host, Nick Mason. Whoa, 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 it's magic, you know. Never believe it's not so. Very good. Thank you. What's the occasion? Nah, nothing. Just that I'd sing again. <laughs> Great. It's <laughs> Just been... that I'd sing again. <laughs> that has been a while, hasn't it's, it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about Harry we're Potter We're doing Harry later. Potter. Yeah. I looked at the last time we did a Harry Potter episode. It was two years ago. Wow. Yeah, we left it exactly? that long. Exactly. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? You, you want more information than yes, that, do you? Yes. It'd probably be about two years. Okay. Exactly. Right. Maybe a bit shy of. It'd mm. be about two years exactly. We get requested that every week. That's true. And every week I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we didn't have a topic this week. And, <laughs> and we're like, yeah, 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 yeah let's do it. Yeah. Stuff. Anyway, we'll get to that. Because right. we're going to talk about the Venom trailer up okay. top. Okay. Yep. I'm very excited for how this is going to sink the universe immediately. What are you excited for about it? Okay, here's what I I liked. shouldn't say that. It could yep. be fine. Sorry, go on. Here's what I liked about didn't it. Didn't look good, though. <laughs> Sorry, go If on. you'd let me get a word in, didn't look good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, look, I like the fact that he, he we've finally got an on-screen Venom that looks really big. Yes. Because... Uh, That's had... more uh, Ultimate Venom as well. Yeah. Ultimate Venom is huge. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we didn't get little weedy Topher Grace. Yes. Venom, etc. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, like, whether you like the look of it or not, it looks a lot better than it sounds. Because I couldn't understand a gold darn thing I that know, he was right? saying. Yeah. Does he call somebody a turd at yeah, one he point? Call, he says, I'm going to bite your face and your arms and legs off and you're going to roll down the street like a turd in the wind. All right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Terrific I, stuff. I did a trailer breakdown. Mitch helped with the editing because I was away. Thanks, but, uh, Mitch. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. I think, that's, I think they're looking at this as in a Deadpool kind of way. It's got a fun little stinger on the end and this is a, he's a bit rude. He is a bit rude. You know what I mean? He, yeah. He's, he's mm. doing some jokes and he's... What's with just Tom Hardy's general accent in this, though? It's well, what's with what's with Hollywood's obsession with a yeah putting Tom Hardy in some sort of mask or helmet <laughs> yeah. for most of a movie so we can't understand so we can't see him mm. and what's with he's already had one movie where it was an absolute disaster for his for, for understanding him yes and they had to him redub a, all the dialogue and giving him a weird voice yeah. why go straight back into that yeah. what are they thinking I think it's not only. You know, you said you couldn't really understand the Venom voice. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the mouth because you can't lip read it the way that you would normally. That's I think that's, true, that yeah. may be an element of it. Uh-huh. But they'll probably they'll probably redub the dialogue because that is his voice, and they kind of tweak it. I think initially they got somebody else, and then they yeah, they I think I heard that it. as well. Yeah. I don't look. I I thought the last trailer looked really good, and then this one, I'm like, oh no, really interesting. Yeah, okay. I don't actually. I actually don't mind this one. I think, I think it looks fun. a lot of it looks kind of unfinished and, and look, it, it's still, it's not out till October or something like that. So uh-huh. there's a, there's a very good chance, but it just looks like, and then he fights an evil venom and he's trying to get, put all the toxin into the water. And it looks like that. Cause he's like, the universe is a virus and I'm the cure. I'm, you know, I, I bet it's all that. I'll be honest. I was not paying attention to any element of the plot in this trailer. Yes. I was just waiting to see what venom looked like mm. and he looked all right. He did look all right. Yeah. What about uh, so? There's going to be other symbiote symbiotes. So is, is it is it anti venom? Is that no? The, it's um, toxin. No, it's it's not. Carnage. There's like six of them. And uh-huh. It's from an early Venom Spider-Man comic. He is it's like Void or something. It's in my it's in my video. I don't know. I'll link it below. Riot. That's his name. Because there was there was a bunch of because apparently each symbiote symbiote depending yes. how you say it. How do you say it? I say symbiote symbiote. Yeah, that's what I say too. Mm-hmm. But uh, Sim Sim for sure. Yeah, Sim Sim. But they've got five seeds in them, and they Sim take Sim seeds. Sim Sim seeds, and they take them out, and they make these five other symbiotes. Oh, they symbiotes. have like five eggs, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so Venom only has a limited time to have kids before he becomes like a withered old crone. That's right, exactly. Huh. Yeah. So I think there's going to be others. I don't think it's going to be just right, okay. him. But uh, oh, I cannot wait for that CGI explosion. Of yeah, just, it should be good. But I think it's just going to CGI masses of. Weird black spaghetti yeah, running at each gonna other. it's going to be goo and just hitting each other. And I just don't... That final... There's a final shot in the trailer where you see 
where they're both in the suits. And yes, and one and the 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 villain takes a swing at Venom and takes the head off, but he's he's not in the head. Yeah, he, that looked cool. That was yeah, a good I, I I agree. There's moments of it that look fine, mm-hmm. but uh, boy, I, if you like if you like tendrils flipping trucks as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I do. Yes, you do. Well, on the back of that also, Sony have... Uh, I don't know if they announced this, but it's it's been revealed that they're also working on a Craven the Hunter spinoff for this... Not non- an odd choice. For this, especially for a Spider-Man specific... He's so... Sp- well, so is Venom. But Craven is, is, again, his main goal when he shows yeah. up is to kill, kill Spider-Man. Spider-Man. At least Venom fights other symbiotes and goes into space yeah. and does all kinds of crazy stuff. Craven's... You can cut off half his head and there's still a man in there. Exactly. Yeah. Craven is just a guy yes. who wants to kill Spider-Man for the most part. <laughs> Who's he going to kill in this? Venom. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I just think this is all. This is Sony all over. Yeah, This is sure. just... Mm-hmm. They're, they're, it's another crack at a cinematic universe. They're putting the cart before the horse. Yeah. Other metaphors about being shit at filmmaking. You know, the dar- you know that metaphor of the dark universe. <laughs> the dark universe, yeah. I don't know. Look, I could be wrong. I could very well be wrong. But mm. this, I think at best, this is going to be okay. And I, I think if you're kicking off a universe, that that's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Who's he fight? I don't... You, you get you get me. Yeah. You get stuff. I just mean all of that. I, I've no... Yeah. What are they doing for any of these? Mm. Who is he fighting? I, I guess it would have to be Venom. Or... No, but I, that's the thing. I don't think it is. I think he's just... They're, maybe they're just going to introduce some generic... Superpowered or non-superpowered characters. Yes. Also, he's a villain. Yes. <laughs> you know, but he's got no redeeming features. He hunts humans for sport. Well, he killed that lion. And he cut it in half. He cut, it he in cut half. its face in half and wears it as a vest. I don't like that. I don't no. like his attitude. Mm. He'd be on Twitter nowadays. People would be like, "I dis." Ricky Gervais would be like, "I disapprove of this. <laughs> I'm better than everybody. I'm Ricky mm. Gervais." Yeah, you know it. But uh, yeah, apparently these they are going for a darker tone of this universe in general. I don't know if you noticed that from the Venom trailer. But apparently the reason they're able to put villains, so many villains in the Venom movie is because there's no heroes. I'm like, yeah, that, that's how that works. You just put no heroes and you, put, you stack it with villains. Yeah, that sounds... <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Like, you don't, don't give me a Craven movie unless he's fought Spider-Man and he's been defeated and then it's the, his journey of yeah. either redemption or coming back on top or something. Well, like, no. Okay, then. Cool. <laughs> Well, they aren't going to give me what I want, so... No, definitely Which not. Which is not a Craven movie, I guess. That's what I want. <laughs> I would love to see Craven in a Spider-Man movie. Yeah, for sure. I think that would be a, a good fit. So, look, I, I think this is less and less likely that it's going to join up with the MCU anyway. Oh. I think all these characters are probably going to be handed over in a few years. Because when the, this is Avi Arad and Amy Pascal, I think... Oh who run the rest of the universes into the ground, except for the new oh, Spider-Man ones. So. Mm-hmm. Terrific. Great. <laughs> I'm really excited. Are you excited? Said yes. Craven. <laughs> it would be a good Craven. Someone said Henry, Henry Cavill? No, he's not. He's not jungle enough? He's not jungle enough, yeah. Who's ju- what about a Joe Manganiello? Is he jungle enough? No. I think swarthier. He needs to be swarthier. Like a what? Give me an example. Like a, um... I mean, from a person in our life. Yeah, no, I... Oh, okay. Like one of our personal real-life <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. friends. I want this just a reference. Javier you... Bardem. <laughs> okay. You know. That's a good choice. Thank you. Is he ripped enough? Is he ripped? I have no idea. I don't think he would be. He's got I... a big Easter Island head. Yeah. I know that about uh-huh. him. But yeah. a lot of Craven is shirtless stuff. It's a lot of vests and lion well, capes and whatever. It's fine. Okay. Body double him, it's fine. <laughs> okay. What about Vincent Cassell? Who's he? He's too French. He's the fox in Ocean's 12. And 13. He's too French. It's not yeah. bad. That's a bit out of the box. I don't mind that. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be more of a, some sort of rat man. <laughs> the rat king. Yeah. He could be the rat king. And you could keep him French. That's true, yeah. Don't you think? You just say le rat king. <laughs> yeah, le, rat. le rat royale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Thank you. Uh, this is exciting, genuinely. Wow. Uh, Jean-Luc... I, Mac- I think it's interesting that we have to qualify when we say, <laughs> this is exciting. Nah, tricked ya. It's not. It's not, but this is. This is. Patrick Stewart is coming back as Jean-Luc Picard 20 years after, it's set 20 years after the uh, last episode of Next Generation. Oh. There are no scripts written at this Picard point. Picard H20. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And there's no scripts written, okay. so it's a fair way off. Because yep. they're talking about building a whole lot of new Star Trek shows for TBS? I was going to say TBS. Are that they? would also be my guess. Yeah. And there's also, he's hinted at, because he came out on stage at... Trekacon or whatever was going on mm-hmm. and he said also he might not be a captain at this point maybe he's marooned on an island and somebody goes Ooh, to get him back yeah, and then okay. he doesn't want him but then he comes back as a hologram and then he dies would you like that 
Um, a dead hologram. Yes. No. Okay. Not so Fair much. enough. I think this is great, though. I think it's good that they're mm. moving because they haven't really moved that old universe forward. Well, it's not the old universe. It's no, like we're the, sort of stuck at what happened. What was the last one? Star Trek Nine, Nemesis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the one with Tom Hardy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that Nemesis? Nemesis was the one where Picard fought his clone. Yeah, I think that was the last yeah, one. Okay, right. Yeah. Yes. And that was like 2002 or three or something. Yeah, right. and it was uh-huh. very unwell received. It was underwhelming, that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But Picard also showed up in other series, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, I think he showed up in like other ones. Really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me an example. Uh, Deep Space his series, Nine. Do you mean his series Blunt Talk? Yes, he showed up. <laughs> no, he showed, I think he showed, I think Picard was in the first episode of Deep Space Nine. Didn't he show up in other stuff like during? He wouldn't have been in Enterprise, but no, I'm sure he was in other stuff. I feel confident he was not. He did the hand, in the first episode of Deep Space Nine, the yeah, Enterprise shows the up over. at Deep Space Nine, he does the handover. And yeah. do they leave Warf or Warf hangs around later no, or something? No, Warf appears in like season two or three, I think. Okay, right, gotcha. Yeah, 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 great. Good stuff. Any other questions about a series I vaguely remember? Oh boy, do I have... <laughs> the Dominion. Okay, what's Odo. that? Odo. Is the Borg dead? No, they're all all about the place. Are they? Yeah. Aren't they nice now when some work on a ship? No. Isn't there like some people with Borg parts or whatever? There's some people with Borg parts, And they're parts, like, look, yes. i got Borg parts. You just yeah, need to exactly. accept that, yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Remember when... It's me, Ernest Borg parts. <laughs> do, you remember... do you remember the movie... Famous uh... character actor, Ernest Borg Ernest parts. Borg parts. Do you remember First Contact where the Borg was in a was in a big old Borg sphere? Yes. Or a cube. They were in a cube and then they were the in the cube. sphere. Yeah, I remember. Crazy, right? Yeah, right? What was in the sphere? We know, that's what I'm saying! Maybe a little pyramid. A trapezoid. Ooh. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Um, should have been all the way down. They should yeah. have done all the shapes. Yeah. I think Inside this... that Russian doll. Yes, in the very center. Mm-hmm. I think... Well, this is the era of bringing back stuff, isn't it? Boy, isn't we're it well right? into it. I mean, we're going to talk about Terminator in a bit. Uh-huh. And I think, you know, the people who were fans of these series from years back are now at an age where they uh-huh. want to see them again. And there's enough of a break where it's not naff. Like, imagine if they had kept making this and then they were like, Ricard's back in another series. I'm like, well, he's been making this for 15 years. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, right. who cares? He's been Since then, he's been Professor X. Yeah. He's been... Blunt talk. He's been blunt talk. He's been some other people. He's definitely been some other people. Mm. That's that's. There's no doubt. I don't know if I'm on. He board. narrates the movie Ted or something. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, I I don't know. I would kind of. Do you think he should? Do you think he'll have? Do you think he'll have evolved as a character? Do you yes. think he'll have mellowed, or do you think he'll have? It's. I think mad perhaps. Well, he, they say the only bit of information is that he's not a captain. Right. Well, he might so not be a captain. So it could be he could have moved up. He could have moved, moved up. Moved down. Could have moved down. Yeah. Could have could have quit the biz. Could have quit the biz. Maybe he may, he has a sandwich van. He could have a sandwich van. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Let's watch that. Is that what's in the middle of the cube and the the, the it's sandwich, it's van, a sandwich yes. van? Okay, yeah. good. Uh-huh. And he's done it up. He's done it. Oh, good. Well, you should. Mm-hmm. You need to for space. Uh, do I have any other thoughts about this? Probably. Probably yeah. got heaps. of I thoughts. I guess that means they'll bring back Riker and Data and whatever. Data's tricky because what if they're all dead though? That'd be great. Yeah. See. <laughs> but also, you could bring them back with time travel or whatever. That's true. That would be great. That would be great That'd also. Be great. Right? Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, what's his name? Riker. What's the, the Jonathan actor? Jonathan Frakes, yes. He does a lot of Star Trek directing and writing, doesn't That's he? That's true, yeah. So mm. it wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if he has a hand in this or mm. even shows up. What's your ideal Jean-Luc Picard return scenario? Assuming you have one. <laughs> you don't have to have one. I'm kind of sick of burnt out, you, you're not what you used to be kind of guy, right, uh-huh. you know? Uh, I wouldn't mind a... He's retired and happy and he's forced to come back in as opposed uh-huh. to like the universe has changed and I've changed too. And bl- yeah. Fuck you. No. Just, be, just <laughs> That's true. Can't you just be well adjusted? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I, w- I wouldn't mind marooned in his back, but that was kind of the plot of Star Trek 7. And, and The Last Kirk. Jedi. <laughs> yeah, it was also The Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Did you ever read the Kirk novels written by William Shatner? Do you think I ever read them? Maybe this is a... <laughs> Good what point. do you think, Mason? Because I did. <laughs> I know you did. I yeah. think we've talked about them here before. Yeah, but they are. They're fan fiction. They're fan they? fiction written by William Shatner or ghost written. I don't know. Yeah. That where because at the end of seven he sacrifices himself. He's I crushed think. by crushed by a bridge or a girder yeah, or something. Exactly yeah, exactly to to save everybody else. But then I I can't remember the. I was going to look it up the other day because it just came to my mind, but I didn't get a chance. But in there's a sequel novel that he wrote to Star Trek Generations where he's still alive for some reason. Does he, does he get young again? Yeah, I think he does. He gets young and hot again and he's banging broads and doing detective stuff. It's so he's just incredible. working in his other show. Yeah. That's he's just, great. He's just... 
TJ Hooker or Tech yeah. War or whoever. That I'm dude. gonna look it up. I'm gonna give you updates later. I don't mind. Okay. That dude has gone mad. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. he went mad a while ago. Mm. He wears a piece, right? That's uh, yes. that's the rumor, is that right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And probably any number of pieces, depending on what you I don't doubt it. What you're referring to there. See, that's what I like about Picard as well. You know what I mean? He just embraced it. That's true. Yeah. I think was there some test footage where he wasn't bald originally? I think maybe they tried him with a wig. I know they I know they have flashback episodes or they show like a picture of him when he's younger and he's got hair. Uh-huh. But yeah. The Shatnerverse series by William Shatner. It's a series. There's also a move there's also a novel called Shatner Quake, but I don't think he wrote it. It's not, is it related to No, no, no. Shatner, it's part of the Shatner, it's all part of the Shatnerverse. Yeah. I'll get back to you. We'll, we'll do some more news and I'll I'll give you some excerpts from oh, Wikipedia mate, about wait. the Shatnerverse. Uh, we probably don't need to talk about this too long, but it just ties into everything's coming back. Shut up, everybody, because everything's coming back. Uh, there's an ALF reboot in the works. I don't care about didn't, that. Didn't the dad turn out to be really racist or something in yeah, real life? Or, or a, yeah, look, I don't want to make any presumptions because I can't remember. Let's just assume he was really racist. Okay. Because that's the least worst thing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Is it though? Ooh. Yeah. Do you want to Google the dad from Alf and see what happens? <laughs> In the meantime, the novel The Return takes place on the pl- begins on the planet Viridian 3 and takes place shortly after the events seen in the motion picture Star Trek Generations. The body of James T. Kirk is stolen by the Romulans after his burial. Using alien technology, the Borg bring Kirk back to life and his Katra is restored, but false memories are implanted to turn him against the Federation. And okay. He bangs some broads. Okay, that's good. So many broads. Oh, he resists commands to kill Worf Data and Geordie LaForge. That that's classic him, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it though? Yeah, because he's just he's just that tough. Kirk is eventually captured on Deep Space Nine. Oh, he's brought he's bringing it all together. This guy's killing it. Oh, he's made, oh, he's made Where do you reckon he is now? Probably. I mean, he hasn't been born yet, technically. Okay, I was wrong about the racism. Okay. Uh, former Alf star uh, Max Wright and outcast after gay porn and crack smoking past exposed. See the photos twenty five years later. No, thank Probably you. Give that a miss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there you go. Yep. What else is going on in the Shatnerverse? Uh, he, uh, they, they take a Defiant class starship. They rename it the Enterprise. Okay. He captains the ship. Yep. They go to the Borg homeworld. Um, once there, the the Enterprise neutralizes the Borg Romulan fleet around the planet with a wave. Hello. Hey guys. Stop. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> it's the magic word. Uh, and then he sacrifices himself again. Wow. So he's dead again. No, I think he's alive. I think he's alive in the next one. Because he's a clone or something? Yeah, I don't know. God, he's the best, isn't he? Shortly after the background, shortly after the release of Star Trek Generations, William Shatner pitched the story of Kirk being brought back to life by the Borg for the next Star Trek film. Nice. While Paramount was interested in using the Borg for the next movie, they did. Yeah. They also felt the torch had been passed. Yeah. Yeah. They okay. dropped a fucking bridge on him. <laughs> <laughs> dropped a bridge it on him. It was well and truly yeah. uh-huh. passed. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I wonder if he'll ever come back in a series. He'll have to, right? Kirk? Yeah. In one of the nine Star Trek William TV Shatner? series they got, yeah, uh, they got planned. They've tried apparently tried to work him into the new movies, but they haven't really found a good opportunity. I think it's also because he looks nothing like Chris Pine. It would be weird. So you look, look you look at Zachary Quinto and um, Chris Pine. No, uh, Leonard Nimoy. Oh yeah, they look pretty much. They yeah. look like the same. Yeah, person. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just think it might be a weird disconnect. Mm-hmm. Also, Shatner isn't a very good actor, and I would never say that to his face. Mm. But uh, he isn't. He's not here though, is he? <laughs> no, so we can not, say it yeah. all we like. But good on him. Mm. He's, he's he's killing it. Uh, speaking of things that are coming back forever, God. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> well, we, we should have some sort of confetti cannon <laughs> for any time we get some news of a new thing, and we just shoot it up our nose. <laughs> yes. Uh, Terminator Six got its first cast photo. Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't sold on this, and I'm not particularly either. It's not a great photo, but Linda Hamilton. She's back. Looks great. Yep, agreed. Do you think maybe that's the element of these movies that are missing and why she they're not good? She does have like suburban mom hair though. Yeah, man. It's got that, it's got that blonde with the, with the dark roots in it. Yeah, yeah. Looks uh-huh. good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, that's, yeah. Do you think she might be the missing element to making these movies good again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You think so? Or I you know so. so. I okay, know so, yeah. yeah. Uh, people also shitting on this photo because like, it looks kind of generic. Do you remember the photos from... Terminator Genesis, where they're standing on a runway and they're just firing guns at nothing. Yeah. Do you remember those? Yep. So it's better than that. It sure is. I think she's got an intensity that yeah. works with these movies. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So I think if this was just three, like three people, then none of them were her. Uh-huh. I think that this would be. And it was just or another picture of Arnold because like, well, we've seen him. He's been in the last two or three or oh, whatever. Yeah. He, however many he was in. 
What's he in? Yeah, he was in. He, he was in three. He wasn't in f- four, but he was in five. Is that right? Yes. Okay. But good. he was technically in four. Yes, he was. Um, a face. CGI face or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do you think this is going to be good? Uh, who's directing it again? Tim Miller, Deadpool. He's also yeah, done yes. a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I'm on board with this. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. It'll be at least fine. Yeah. Well, It'll be apparently, better than five. It's gonna. It's also doing that thing of ignoring all the continuity of the Alf Telly movie. So dark, terrific. Mm. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Where well, Alf was executed by the government. Yes, he was. Was that what happened? Or he was no, captured and he's... He's captured, yeah. Yeah. Good on him. Uh, it looks like Disney, this is according for, to Variety, so it looks like it's probably fairly likely. They're not going to hire back James Gunn. They're like, that no. kind of stuff is indefensible and it's, and it's not happening. I'm not particularly surprised. Uh, yeah. Regardless of what you, know, you think about the situation... They're well within their rights to fire him, and they're well within their rights to not bring him back. Yeah, and mm. I think, but and also, I think it's I think it, there'd be a mindset of, well, if we made a decision initially, mm. and if we cave due to external pressure, yeah, then people are never going to stop chipping away at us with everything. Yeah, that's right. You know, like bring back this franchise, yeah, fire this guy, whatever. Like every, it'll just be a constant barrage of that, and I think they're like, yeah. we don't want to look weak. Yeah, though it could be, it might be interesting because the cast came out with a letter like they defending did, yeah. him, and who knows, are they, you know, are some of them not going to then be involved in the new one, or mm. and they're, they're apparently they're looking at new directors, or they're, but apparently it's not familiar faces in terms of people okay. in the franchise, like people were saying Taika Waititi, but I don't think any of those guys would do it because they seem yeah. like they're all friendly enough where to be like, ah, it feels weird to, stepping other people's toes, yeah, yeah. Mm. so. Yeah, but I and again, I also think, and I think maybe we mentioned this last time. I feel like it's they feel like the Guardians formula has been set in stone now. Yes, and they don't need yep. James Gunn. Just they put don't a need cool, the anymore. jazzy soundtrack, and, exactly. Yeah. Which I think they might be surprised. It might not be as easy to replicate as they think. Agreed. Yeah, but we'll mm-hmm. see how that mm-hmm. how that plays out. Now, Mason, you had a bloody cracking week last week because there, because there was no Star Wars news. But I'm happy to report. Oh no! It's it's back again this week. Star Wars. There actually was Star Wars news, but because we recorded so early, then we didn't get. A we didn't get to the Star Wars, Star Wars news. news. Yeah, it felt like a vacation. <laughs> it did, didn't it? For you, I was sad. Uh, they, so they announced the cast that's returning. It's a lot of familiar faces. You mm-hmm. got your Adam Driver and your Daisy Ridley's and your John Boyega's mm-hmm, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mark Hamill's coming back as well, which is. Which uh, means Luke a ghost. Skywalker's coming back from the dead. Yay! Or it could be they could be doing flashbacks because mm-hmm. people are like, "Why didn't Luke do a flip or whatever?" So maybe they'll do a flip. He'll yeah, do a flip exactly. in the past. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what do you want to see him do a flip? Yes. <laughs> There'll do be a flash. It. Kylo Ren will rem- remember his time in the in the Jedi in yeah. the Jedi Temple in the training grounds. Be like now, Kylo. Watch me do a flip. <laughs> now you do a flip. Your flip wasn't as good, Kylo. <laughs> I swear revenge! <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, the other thing they mentioned was Billy D. Williams is returning to the franchise. Orlando. Which a lot of people are uh, excited for. He's like 81 as well, yep. so I can't imagine we're going to get a lot of Billy D. running about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, there's talk of him getting back in shape and uh, and showing up again. So, yeah, what kind of role? He's been would... walking every day. Every day of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of Billy D. coming back? What do you think they're going to be doing with him? Also, do you know his real name? I looked this up. His real name is William December Williams. That's pretty great. Isn't it just? Yes. Is it better than Billy D. Williams? Because I don't think it is. No, I think Billy D. is better. Yeah. William December. Oh, actually, wait. Hmm. Willie December. Because I had an epiphany. I'm like, yeah. Billy Dick. Is his name William Williams? Well, it's, it's Willie Williams. <laughs> yeah. I like Willie Williams. <laughs> Willie Williams. It's not cool though, is it? No. But not Billy D isn't cool either. I think it is cool. All right. Well, I agree to disagree. Wow, well, you're wrong. Yeah. Maybe I've just, because I'm so, I've always had Billy D in my life. Yeah, yeah. So sure. mm-hmm. yeah. maybe that's just kind of. he's your uncle. He's my uncle, yeah. yeah. Mine's Javier Bardem, obviously. Is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Your uncle's got a huge face. I know. <laughs> Swarthy. <laughs> But yeah, what do you think he's going to... I would have gone with December Williams, I think, if I was choosing a stage name. I think it sounds a bit too pornographic. Does it? Yeah. All right. You know, like it's not a real name. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a real name. Exclusively Christmas porn. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Exclusively, yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, how do you think they're going to use him in this? Minimally. Yeah, right? Maybe they just go to where he's been holding up and he gives them some some advice. He gives them some guns and some advice. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I think it's very much going to be... 
Because you, I don't think you could go. I don't think you could take an eighty-one-year-old man, especially like, you know, the glamorous Lando Calrissian, and be like, he's still smuggling. He's still, yeah, he's still, you know, just barely scraping by. Because he never really. I mean, he was in the solo movie, but he he kind of got it together, and he yeah, he was a he was a competent businessman, and then he. He was I think they might go to re- back rebellion. To, I think they could definitely go back to Cloud City. Yeah, okay. I think, yeah. I, mean, and if, I think if they want to recover some of the fans that they lost yeah. with the Last Jedi, I think ret- a return to something familiar would work quite well. Yeah. So right. maybe they go back to Cloud City, and he j- he's just like, "Here I am, and everything's still great in Cloud City." And I betrayed you all again. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader's back. You thought he was dead. He's not. <laughs> Look at him do a flip. <laughs> No, you do a flip. <laughs> oh, your flip wasn't as good. Mm. But uh, yeah, I th- yeah, that's very possible. I yeah. think we're probably going to get some old locations in this one. Because yeah. I don't think... Have we seen any existing locations in the new ones? I don't think we have. No. We've seen new locations that look surprisingly similar to old locations. If I see Tatooine, I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> like, in a good way or a bad way? No, in a way that you put a desert planet in the first one. We've seen enough of Tatooine. You don't. What's there? Nothing. There's yeah. fuck all there. There's uh-huh. no one there. Everyone from the past there is probably dead. We don't need to go back. I would love to see Tatooine back, just to see people who hated the desert planet <laughs> in the first one just go bananas over. Oh my god, Tatooine's back. This is so exciting. <laughs> but it's not though, is it? That's what I'm saying. It was exciting. The mental gymnastics yeah. that people would have to go through yeah. to be like, I hated this desert planet, but I love this desert planet. Yeah. It was exciting for, I guess technically for the for the 2 minutes that pod race went pod race went for. Yeah, right. And then skip forward 30 years and it was exciting when stormtroopers killed Luke's family. That's and then nothing exciting. else happened that's in between. So true. So that, and also if they're doing the Obi Wan movie, that's enough Tatooine, don't you think? Yep. But uh, the other bit of news that came out of this was, though was Carrie Fisher is going to be back using archival footage from Episode Seven, Ooh, and there's also okay. rumours they're going to be using footage from Episode Eight. Uh, apparently, the role might be more substantial than you think. Mm. I think if you're going to bring her back, I, we've talked about how they probably just kill her off off screen. But I think this is a, I think they might keep her alive in the universe. I think that's yeah, a, that's right. A good maybe idea. maybe kind of like Paul Walker's out there in. Yeah, that's right. Fast and Furious world. Yeah. What were you going to say, though? I was going to say maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe they they say she's been injured or something, and then she's like, okay, well, I'm taking a backhand roll, everybody. I'll be over on this planet. Yeah, right. So I'm still around, Mm. but you're not going to see me. I'm here if you need me, but you won't need me. me. Don't worry about it. Because the plot will not require you to need me. I'm (laughs) I'm thinking about how I'm sure there's unused scenes of her talking about the First Order being like, the First Order's a master great army or whatever. I'm sure yeah, they can right, just, sure. And then uh-huh. just stand somebody else in front of her. Carrie, just riff about the First Order. Yeah. Just give us some stuff. Look, there's, a, some there's a lot of them. They've got a laser planet. Uh, <laughs> yep. What do you want? I'm not, there's tons of lasers. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this flip! <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, no! <laughs> We're not assured for this. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, that was a good flip. Yeah. So I guess also they're going to have to CGI new clothes on her. Because he can't go back to the, you know, the the general's clothes from. That's true. So, yeah. Mm. But clothes aren't particularly hard to CGI no. change, I'd imagine, uh-huh. compared to a whole human face. Anyway, I'm glad they're not doing a CGI person. Agreed. I think this is a this is a good way to do it. Yeah. Mm. I I'm you know it might it might work out really well. Sometimes yeah. it does. Sometimes it doesn't. We've actually got a video coming up this week, Mason, oh, where we're what? talking about all the different times that people were brought back to dead back from the dead in cinema. Oh. And uh, that was great. Yeah. We haven't recorded. We it haven't yet. recorded it yet, but let yet. me tell you, it's going to be, it's gonna be pretty one good. of the best, pretty, pretty if good. not the best. It would, it would be fascinating to be the writer in the room where they're like, "Here's all the archival footage yeah. of Carrie Fisher we didn't use. Build a plot out of it." Yeah, right. Wild, right? Can you use this flip that she did? We didn't think she could do it, <laughs> but she, she did it. And she we... surprised us all, if we're, if we're honest. <laughs> Look, yeah. we, we think, can you somehow put together some sort of circus storyline <laughs> where she leaves to join the circus because of her incredible flip abilities? I would love that. It would make my day. Last bit of news, Mason. Uh, Matt Reeves has said, there was a rumor this week that his Batman movie is based off year one. And everyone was like, <sighs> but apparently it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is noir driven and Affleck is not officially out, but there was also a rumor <laughs> that he is, he's going to jump ship. And also, if it's it's a prequel, which it said that it might be, but it's in the same universe, they'll probably use a different. 
Just make anything at this point. Just get an old 1960s Batman TV show script and film that again. <laughs> Just film it exactly as it was. You want Egghead? Put King Tut in it. Egghead? Yes, Egghead okay. and King Tut. Egghead and King Tut. Mm-hmm, that's what right. A, double The double act. Name a more iconic duo, Mason. Um, Louis the Lilac. Yep. And it's another terrible 1960s Batman villain. Egghead. Egghead again. <laughs> <laughs> gets in it again. Uh, Great. Yeah, I think I saw three different articles this week that were variously Affleck is in and now he's out. But he's uh, definitely right. in. Yeah, yeah. But is he out? Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Just do something. Yeah. Make a move. Or don't. Just do this forever. That's fine also. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All right, Mason. We've got to do an ad. Do you mind? Actually, before you do an ad. Oh, no. Uh, I was in an episode of our friend Matt Stewart's podcast, uh, yeah. Primates, which is a podcast where he uh, talks about all the primates, chimps, monkeys, gorillas, etc. in yes, popular yes, culture. Yes. Uh, and I was on the most recent episode where we talked about the film Dunstan Checks In. Which had you he ever had seen, seen that film before? He'd seen it for the first time. He saw it for the first time as a child. I saw it for the first time the day before we recorded the episode. What did you think of it? Didn't hate it. Really? I mean, it's not good. Nah, well, they never are, are nah, they? No, they're really quite bad. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's fair got, enough. It features the great Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Yeah, is he... Features a... But he's not like a like a squirrely bank teller or something. No. Isn't he like a dad or something? He's a fairly charming dad hotel manager. I don't understand. No, I don't. It's playing against time. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm very Did sure. Did you guys watch a different movie? No, we watched the same movie. Did you guys watch The watch. Concierge? Didn't watch The Concierge, you know. Okay, it's Michael J. Fox. Cool. <laughs> Pretty good. Anyway, it was really good fun. And if you go back, there's a, there's maybe I think there's maybe four or five other episodes. And there's, yes. a, there's one with Jess Perkins. There's one with Andy Matthews. There's one with Alistair Trombley Birch. I think there's one with Dave Warnocky. It's All those people are stuff. delightful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Claire and I actually recorded one, which should be coming oh, up soon as well. So, as yeah. a duo. As a is duo. it about some sort of monkey family? No. Is it? What was it? No, it is. It oh, is about a monkey there family. There we go. That's actually. what I yeah. thought. That's what I thought. He knows how to pick them. It's not a monkey family, though. Oh. Actually, I think Claire picked it. Oh. Anyway, the most important thing is that the thing that you said. Thank you. Uh, Mason, I know you love Harry's Razors. I need, I need you to know that I know that. That's important to me. That, that, wait. It's important to, to, to you that I know that you know that I love, <laughs> that Harry's, love Harry's Razors. razors. Yep. Well, well, I do, so you're right. Good. Excellent. Ha- Harry's, they stand behind the quality of their blades because they know that switching razors, it might not be an easy decision. Yeah. I think it is. But this says it's here... It's a real pain in your hiney. It can be, can't it? Mm. I don't think it is. But they say here that it is. It can be. I think it is. Well, I don't think it is. No, I need I you to it... know that I think that you that it isn't. Huh, all right. Yeah. Well, I think... Do a flip! <laughs> <laughs> because people like you and them think it's not an easy decision, uh-huh. I've actually created a trial set which you can claim by going to harrys.com slash Weekly Planets. Very nice. Can you believe that? A free... I can because we've been doing it for months now. Yeah, that's right. People are, cl- people are claiming them. They're bloody loving them. They're loving them, people mate. People give us a tweet, send us a tweet when they get the trial set. And they like, go, look at these. Look at them, exactly. And we look at them, don't yeah, we? that's right. And they make themselves a big shaving foam beard. We look at they, them. They shave themselves. We hilarious. look at them, don't we? We look at them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They deliver a close. That's a very easy decision to make. <laughs> yes. Looking at a photo. They deliver a close, comfortable shave at a fair price. Because the reason they do this is because the owners were fed up of, o- of, of uh, overpaying for expensive razors with unnecessary features. They have a, they'd had a gut full of it. They had a bloody gut They were full. ropeable. A tum tum full. They would had a tum tum full. <laughs> no, a bloody ropeable about yes. paying too much for razors. Then they know that a great shave comes down to great blades made with sharp, durable steel. And that's why they bought a factory that's been making some of the highest quality blades in the world for 90 90- Five dollars. I mean, years. Wow. <laughs> they're not ninety-five dollars. No, they're they're very reasonably that, priced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way they're able to do that, they're just two dollars per blade compared to say four that you would get in the store. Is because they cut out the middleman, and you know that, and I know that. Everybody knows that. Everybody Every, knows. Everybody it's in the, the key, world. It's the key to podcasting. Cut right. out the middleman. Also, if you don't love your shave, Harry, Harry, let Harry's know within thirty days, and they'll give you a full refund. Get a thirteen-dollar trial set that comes with everything you need for a close shave. A weighted ergonomic handle. Five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade. Rich lathering shave gel. <laughs> trimmer blade cover. <laughs> you are really getting into it this week and I appreciate it. <laughs> Listeners of the show can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash weekly planet. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash weekly planet to redeem your offer and let them know 
that we sent you to help support the show. So let them know <laughs> that we, we sent, sent you, you to help support. So you know. The, so they the, know. The, the, that the, you support our show. Thank you. That's important to us. Yes. Very good. Go hard or go home. Yeah. Mason, we mentioned up top, we sang a song. You were here. <laughs> I was there. Uh, yeah. That was your doing. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, well. Uh, that we're going to talk about Harry Potter this this week. Because yes. two years ago, to the very day. Wow. Yep. Uh, we what an did, incredible coincidence. I think so. We didn't if ever... anything, it's a little magical. Is it? Yeah. I think it's a coincidence. Okay. But... It's not even exact. It's not. It's probably a few months off, if anything. Uh-huh. But we did an episode on the two first Harry Potter films leading up to Fantastic Beasts. Where are all the, where are all the beasts? Where are they? They're in the case. They're in the case. Just don't open the found case. That out, done it. Yes, that'll be fine. Come on. They didn't. They it's did. pretty though. basic stuff. Yeah, it was. Well, I thought so. But this time around, we're up to Harry Potter's three and four, the turning point in the series. It goes from a fun kid affair, Mason. Or a bad weird. kid. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it, from a fun... How do I word There's this? There's three bad movies and then they get a bit better at four. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, a lot of people say, we'll do these in the, we'll obviously uh-huh. go three and then four. A lot of people say that three is their favorite film. Yep. Also book, because it also, it takes a dark turn also in the bloody, in the series of books. The books that you've never read, potentially? I've never read them, though. No. Mm. But you've read them all? Read them all. Yeah. I like them. They're good. Good. Fine. Great. So good let's talk you. about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Full spoilers for this movie that came out in 2004. Four, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They were churning these out, mate. One a year? Yeah, something like that. Uh-huh. I think they did 2001, 2002. Because well, you don't know if the four, kids are going to become ugly. Yeah. All right. Well, that was, I was reading the trivia on some of these, and that was one of the directors for, I think it was four, was like, I was really surprised the kids didn't get ugly or didn't get mean. <laughs> I was also surprised by yeah, that. Right? Yeah. Because they, they're rich. They're rich. They could, they're rich and famous. They you could do become one mean. and then you're fine. Yeah, right. So this movie, uh, what, what's the story? Do I have to oh, ask you that what? for this? <laughs> I, oh, no, I don't think you do. Okay, fair well, enough. Let's discern the story together. Sure. Let's uh, look, well, okay, well, it's, again, okay. like the first two, it starts with Harry yes. being miserable at the Dursley's house. Yeah. Which, if, if these movies have taught me anything, it's, nobody cuts Harry any slack. And they really should. Some people do. Yeah, they, but yeah, he's most rich. Pe- <laughs> like, I was going to say he's rich. But for the most part, it's like, I mean, his parents were murdered. Yeah. And they're all... They're, and he's he's famous because his parents were murdered and he's famously hasn't been in the wizard world yes. his whole life. But nobody ever cuts him any slack. No. In this one, he's like, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back. And he sits on the... the on the... On the on the, the street. street. And then the bus comes and picks him up. And he's like, what's this? And they're like, it's the night bus, Harry, you moron. <laughs> How could you not know it's the night bus? Because he's... He lives in the real world. He's never seen it before. Why are you so mean to him? You know? Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Do they know it was Harry Potter? No, they everybody knows it's Harry Potter. Okay, because in the book, he doesn't tell them he's Harry Potter or something. Uh, yeah. But he looks like But yeah, Harry it's still weird though the way that... What, what I noticed about this movie in general, it really takes a turn visually, which I think for the better, because everything looks like shit. Just <laughs> rickety and nothing kind of... Fits together properly, like a set of stairs doesn't line up properly. Uh-huh. All the clothes are garbage. Everybody's everybody looks miserable. I was gonna say everybody <laughs> looks like a, all the teens are just like dirty and all their all their collars are askew and like well apparently just greasy old dirty shirts. Yeah, apparently in that's Britain, intentional. You know what I mean? Yeah, well that's intentional. Apparently the director of this one. He uh, he was like just Alphonse Quarón. That's right. Who was, Children of Men. Children of Men, great movie. He was just like just wear your clothes how you would. How would you wear them? You know right, what I mean. Okay. If you're if you're a school kid, so I think it kind of I think it works. But mm-hmm. the first two are very clean cut. A lot That's of true, it, yeah. and a lot of it's. I think most of it was shot in a soundstage and all that. Uh-huh. But this is, you know, more kind of real world locations, and they did stuff in real castles and all and all that kind of shit. And it shows. It's also weird that in these movies, I actually I don't hate this movie. I think uh-huh. it's I think it's overrated. And I think a big part of it is because. Harry, Daniel Radcliffe in this is a terrible actor. I think he's much better in the next one. And but, why you say, on. but why are you saying it's overrated? Why do you think it's good? Is it because Gary Oldman's in it? I think maybe that's it. But that it's because it's good? Uh, no, I think people, no, I think people are like, uh, give it more credit because Gary Oldman's in it. I don't Oldman's think he's it. good in this. Yeah, no, exactly. He's chewing a lot of scenes. Yeah, I mean, because it's like he's too... We'll, we'll get to it. But it's like it's, he's too different... We will get to it. I'll come back to it. <laughs> but yeah. So also they kind of, they changed the outlay of the school. So yep. it makes more sense. Like it's true to a, to the real, you know, they kind of, this is the outlay that they use for the rest of yeah, the yeah, movies uh-huh. and the, and the look, cause they changed the location of the, the tree that hits people and a bunch oh, of right, other okay, stuff. Sure. They, uh-huh. they kind of, they kind of move around. 
Also, they kind of just dismiss how he's just using magic in his room. Because I don't know if you remember from two years ago to the very day, Harry Potter, there's magic used in Harry Potter's house and it's the house elf, Dobby. Yeah, you know, the right, one who uh-huh. dies is like, we're best friends and then he gets stabbed or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Dobby uses magic and Harry Potter gets expelled. Yeah, right. Okay. And in this, it opens with him just using a wand in his room to, to read a book. And then he curses his aunt with it. <laughs> so and then, she, no, what? he does that with his mind or whatever. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, because he's, he's a powerful lunatic. How's that work? Well, if you remember, do you remember Fantastic Beasts, Where Are the Beasts? Where yes. are they? Uh-huh. Where They're, were they? They were in the case, yeah. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that dude... Where they should have remained. Yes, I again, agree. Just don't open more. the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what's his name? Bolkart. He's, yeah. he's a wizard boy. And because he was all repressed, it comes out in weird and dangerous ways. Right. And I so believe that's, Harry... that's what this is. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is or that a function of him not is that a function of him existing in the real world for too long? Potentially. I think okay. it's also just because, you know, he's a teenager, he's got I was a lot of say, aggression yeah, a, yeah. And, yeah. and whatever. It's not it's not really explained. There's like it's like in the first one he he talks to a snake and then he makes the sheet of glass oh, that's right. or whatever. Yeah. So he can he can do a bunch of weird shit. Uh-huh. But uh, but he can never do that when he wants to do it. Like with a wand he can. That's what I'm saying. Oh, but right? he can't be like snap his fingers and yeah. make someone's head explode. He needs or something. a wand. <laughs> yeah. It's a crutch, if anything. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a bit short for a crutch. But... <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's me clapping myself, everybody. Sure just is, so yeah. clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they introduce introduce werewolves to the universe. Yep. Because there's not enough weird shit, is yep. there? So, I remember seeing this one in the cinemas. Yep. And they're like, "It's your new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, Professor Lupin." And I went, "Oh, he's the werewolf, isn't he?" <laughs> I don't think they'd introduce the werewolf at the at that point, but I'm like, "Well, his name's Lupin, yeah, so he's, he's definitely a, a werewolf." There's a whole lot of hints towards him being a werewolf. He's got a big old werewolf scratch across his head. Yep. Uh, when he when he, they fight the Boggart, it turns into a moon. His name's Lupin. His name's Lupin. Snape tells everybody that he's a werewolf, pretty much. <laughs> yep. So there's a lot of clues uh-huh. in the book. He's standard werewolf, like he's kind of more wolfish, but here he's a, he's a spindly, sickly werewolf. Yeah, he really. I is. don't know if I like it. Maybe that's a British werewolf. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, bad teeth, mm-hmm. si- spindly and sickly. Yeah, but I think it's because he's kind of a bit more vitamin D. Yeah, absolutely. But I think he's. I didn't mind it so much this time. I think it works in this universe because he's kind of a... It, this is more in the books, but he's much maligned because he's because he was bitten by a werewolf, werewolf as a kid. People like they're second-class citizens and he can't get a job and everyone hates him and he doesn't want to have kids and all this kind of shit. Yeah. People are and so then he mean gets, in this and universe. And then he gets murdered. <laughs> people are so mean in this universe. Yeah, they are. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah. people should cut everybody some slack? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Settle down, God. Did you think it was weird that... Oh, except nobody should cut, like... um. Malfoy any slack or the Dursleys they should kill him <laughs> they should just kill him straight yeah. up yeah I had a thought Malfoy's the little one the young mm. one so painful that kid yeah he you really know what is. they should do yeah. and that's the thing nobody ever because he's like you won't m- mess with me because my father's a blah, 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 blah. and he's a bad guy as well in movies yeah. later right he's yeah a, he's a, he was he's, a bad guy and then he's secretly a bad guy and he's in league not with even Voldemort. secretly but yeah. yeah we'll get to that later yeah but like Everybody, he's always like, you and kid, you my fans, you said, Pat, whatever. What you do, you wait till he's asleep, you put a pillowcase over his head, you get a golden snitch, you put it in the pillowcase, you zip tie it at the neck, and you just leave him for 10 minutes. <laughs> just knocks out his eye. Yes. And he bleeds to death. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And he never knows because you put the pillowcase on his head. That's true. He would never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I find weird about this universe? You're basically giving every kid a gun. Yeah. <laughs> and then running around the school. Yeah. It's a, and they can all do the curses. You can all you can even just hit someone with a stun curse and they fall off a staircase to their death. Yeah. It's very it's amazing. I mean a lot <laughs> of people do die at the school. Yeah. But it's amazing more people don't die. Just kids killing kids. Yeah. Maybe there's some kind of enchantment in place, but it and seems insane. We may cover the some of the same ground that we we covered two years ago. Almost I, certainly. I feel the the point is still valid. That you you teach them all these curses and then they just go and become magical accountants. Yes. What's the point? <laughs> just don't tell them what the cur- I guess, yeah. but that's the thing because it's like the- well, they get out anyway. Yeah. It's like you can how you can three D print a gun. This stuff got to yeah, get around. Yeah, I guess you know? that's true. But it's like all the magic is is you have to say a word and think of something. Yes, that's it. That's all you need to do. Yeah, and that's. But it's more. Spe- it's not anything. Mm. It's specific stuff. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Also, they can't kill the Dursleys, just so you know, because. That's part of the reason Harry Potter is um is hidden from Voldemort. 
because oh, he's because he's a blood relation. He can't be. And that's why he has to go back every summer. Ugh. It's like a top up. All oh, right. He drinks their blood at night. Terrific. Good. Yeah, so Good. <laughs> you okay with that? Mm-hmm. Do you love Malfoy's Nick Carter hair? No, I hate it. I hate everything about him. <laughs> Which I guess is a credit to the actor, but at the yeah, same time, Tom Felton. but I think, but I think it's also it's it's pretty heavy-handed bully it is. stuff. It's, yeah. it's heavy-handed bully stuff, and it doesn't it doesn't make any sense how there's never any payback to him. Yes, I mean Hermione punches him at one point. But yeah, you know. I mean he does. As the movies go on, he kind of gets more payback. It's weird that he's popular, or anybody yeah. listens to anything that he says because he's just an idiot. He's and an he's, not, he's not intimidating no. or brave or strong or good at magic. Yeah, he's right. He's just a fucking idiot. Well, that's true. It's not like he's, he has the, he is the sk- most skilled young wizard. And so yeah. he's like, we'll check out the results kind of thing. Yeah. He's terrible at things. <laughs> he's always antagonizing hippogriffs. Yeah, the hypocrite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Would well, you want to talk about Hagrid and how he takes over the... Uh, Magical beasts position and look at these all these creatures. And the first thing he does is give them a book that will bite your ear off. Which I they don't all get one, right? They all get one, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I just think that's a very strange thing that somebody would make. Yeah. Yeah. Did they have to I should it? just clarify. I love this universe. You I would. love the insanity of you it. You would. Yeah. <laughs> but sorry, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say did they what are they made of? Those books. I think they're just enchanted. Because you can turn a golf ball into a rat. I guess that's so true, you yeah. can, it's, it's whatever. So these aren't creatures that he's murdered. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I don't think he made the book. I All think right. he just selected it okay. for, the, for the... Yeah, but look, if you had a it's book... Like giving somebody if a you book. had a book made of human skin, <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't be my concern that you didn't make it yourself. The fact that you owned it at all would be cause for concern. Sure. Also, you're basically... The, the regular muggle real-world equivalent of that is a, is a math book with a rat trap in it. Like that's what you're yeah. essentially giving. That's true, yeah. Giving students. Yeah. Oh, we should dis- we should when, whenever we talk about something magical in this universe, we should attempt to design the human real world equivalent of it. Okay, I love it. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. So, okay, what's the human equivalent of dementor? Dementors. I guess it's. I think it's just depression. I think that's like. I genuinely. <laughs> well, this, I, well, this game isn't as fun as it was <laughs> ten seconds ago. But J.K. Rowling has said that you know she had some dark times. She came from nothing. She, uh-huh. she you know she she got divorced and she had no money and she was writing this in a cafe and whatever. Uh-huh. And yeah, you know, this was kind of a, a, a metaphor for the darkest times in her in her life uh-huh. or whatever. What yeah, do you think right. about them though? I, I think it's absolutely insane that they put them in a school. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about because all that they let them out at all. Like, yeah. What's the mechanism? I assume to get, because they need to get Sirius Black back. But there's other people in that prison. Presumably it's also guarded. How many is there? Yeah, exactly. But I mean, send detectives. Don't send these these insatiable <laughs> death monsters that suck out the soul of anybody whose path they... You're sending them into... Ch- yeah, a kid's into school. A, into a kid's school. Also, it's not only that, it's... I mean, there's that, that they'll take your soul out of your face. Yeah. But if you're around one, you're just sad. So yeah. you're putting... A really depressing monster in a school for a year. Full of yeah, full of full hormonal of, yeah. children who are probably really depressed anyway. It's really quite bizarre. Yeah. But you know the other thing. You know how uh, okay, human equivalent, a really really depressed security guard. <laughs> <laughs> he's trigger happy with a sword. <laughs> yeah, he's trigger happy. Uh, he's he's a little jumpy. He'll shoot at anything. Yeah. But also, he's just got a lot of tales about how his wife left him <laughs> and how life isn't really worth living. And there's ten of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's from a big family. They all washed out of p- the police academy and they're all security guards. That's it. Also, you know how... Okay, this is fun again. <laughs> this is fun. You know how Sirius Black escaped Azkaban, right? I don't know specifically how he did it. Yeah, he changed into bed a sheets? dog or whatever. Oh. Yeah, bed sheets. I think he changed shouldn't into a dog. Have, shouldn't they have known he could I think do you that? can't because they follow souls or something and... I can't remember the specifics of it. No, but I mean, surely they would have known he had the capability to turn into a frog. No, they didn't. Huh. Because here's the funny thing. Oh, this better be funny. It's pretty funny. All right, okay, so I'm ready to this, laugh. This is more I'm in, primed to laugh, so if I don't laugh, books. this is a failing of your telling it. This is more in the books, and they, talk, they do talk about it in the movie, I think, but you know that the Marauders map that they get? Yes. Which is also an insane thing that we should that talk dis- about. That displays all the locations of everybody. Yes. And it says, and what they're doing. Yes. You don't want that in a... In a in a boarding school. Definitely not. No. Yeah. 
But basically, that was made by Harry Potter's dad and that group of friends, uh-huh. like the rat guy, uh, the werewolf man, yep. uh, Sirius Black and James Potter, who's okay. Harry Potter's dad. And the reason... They can all change into animals because Werewolf Boy was a werewolf and they wanted to be more kind of close to him. Uh-huh. So they... It's a thing. Like Professor McGonagall, I can't remember the name of it, but she can turn into a cat. But you have to register. These guys... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You have to register what? Your intent to turn into an <laughs> no, animal. No, that you, that you can do it. Oh. That so, it's an ability. So this is, so this Anna is, I think it's So called? this isn't a spell. This is you gain the ability to do it all the time. Yeah, it's a transformation. Okay. But I, th- you can only, I think you can only do it into one thing. Okay. Or maybe... If you, I don't know. And it's, Sirius Black is a frog. No, he's a dog. Oh, okay. I thought you said frog. <laughs> no, no, he's a dog. Maybe okay. I said frog. But they did it illegally, and the cr- and the punishment for doing that is a lifetime in Azkaban. So he should be there regardless. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> they knew the rules at the time, right? They knew the rules. A lot of stuff in this universe, the punishment is life imprisonment <laughs> in Azkaban. Yeah. Almost anything. Well, not anything, because sometimes you could just... I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you can inflate your aunt to, to, to an enormous size like a helium balloon and th- hurl her into space. And that's fine. And she nearly knocks out a passenger airliner or whatever. And they're like, nah, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. You get away. There's a lot of Harry Potter getting away with stuff because he's Harry Potter. Yeah, and definitely. And yeah, yeah. I don't think there's as much as the previous one. Yeah. But they, they kind of more pile on him in these movies going forward. Right. Uh, there's a new Dumbledore. Who I Michael Gambon? He's not good. Isn't he? I don't think he's... I thought he was fine. I he's, think he's the better of the two. I think he's the better of the two, but he's, he hasn't got that twinkle in his eye. He just seems like a really sad old man. In the book, there is a sadness to him because he fell oh. in love with gay wizard Hitler and he accidentally killed his sister or something. Oh, yeah, right. We'll see it in Fantastic... <laughs> Details, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's got... There's more of a kind of a, a Gandalf to him and a kind of a... And he's more kind of... Appearance-wise, he's more laid back. He's got a lot going on, but he's uh-huh. really casual and cool and whatever. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Wine shirts. There's that. a great scene in, I think it's Order of the Phoenix, where he escapes a room where some auras come to take him away to arrest him. And he's like, you can't take me. Go fuck yourself. And he claps a phoenix and he disappears. And one of the guys is like, that dude's fucking awesome. Right. <laughs> so there's, there's uh-huh. elements of, of it. But I've seen that one. The Order of the Phoenix? I, I think, think it's so. Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, it's, it's better than the book. I oh, think it's, wow. Yeah. yeah. Big call. Big call. So I don't think he's well suited. And I think there's, it's, that's more evident in four, which we'll, which we'll talk about in a bit. The other, okay, the other element of this is a time turner, which yeah. is a device you give to students who want to learn so much that they can travel through time to attend multiple classes, presumably aging them at a rate faster than every other student. Yeah, and burning them out mentally, I would <laughs> imagine. Yeah. And also... What's the equivalent? Don't Ritalin? Give, it's Ritalin, it's right? It's Ritalin, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, don't give... Surely, even in the hands of... Surely a time machine in the hands of even the most unbalanced adult would be better than giving it to a teenager. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they don't give it to ed- anybody. Like, if Malfoy had to give take extra Just classes. The nerds. Though, if in the, in the, sequ- in the, the play, Cursed Child... There's a time turner plays an element. I won't spoil it. There's a time turner plays an element into that, Ooh. which we'll we'll talk about another day. Just spoil it for me afterwards. I will. I'm not paying six hundred dollars for cursed child tickets. Well, you should, Mason. Yeah, I know. Because maybe somebody here did. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> uh, Emma Thompson turns up in this. Yes, she's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, she gives spooky premonitions. Uh, you know what's? Well, she gives a real premonition in this, right? Because you think uh-huh. she's a kook, and she yes. is, right? But they, you find out in the in the, in the later books. It might even be that book. No, I think it's a later book. The Dumbledore, she went to Dumbledore for a job, which is like, I can see the future. And he's like, that's great. We'll get back to you. And then just is about to leave. She has a, she has like one of those weird spooky premonitions. Uh-huh. And he's like, we'll get her in because that might come in handy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but she doesn't know she can do it. Like she's a liar, So, but oh, she accidentally has this gift. Right. Okay. Yeah. So she isn't a liar then. No, she is. Huh. Because she doesn't know that she can do it. All oh, right. But I guess technically, I guess. What a fun little twist. Mm. I think it's her prediction that gets Harry Potter's parents killed. Oh. Yeah, or something Ooh. like. Might be her. Might be someone else. You two aren't gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. no! Yeah, that's it. Uh, so the hypocrite. It's a. It's a. It's an angry dog, uh, horse bird. Yes, correct. Uh, you have to be really respectful. Or it will kick you in the head, like a uh-huh. horse, I guess. Like a regular. But if you are respectful, it's your best friend. And you can fly around on it. I would never do that. No. <laughs> That's so... 
Also, does everybody get a go on it? No, because because he it kicked Malfoy. <laughs> so. But I mean, hypothetically speaking, it, it, it's it just seemed like an odd choice for the first lesson for Hagrid to give the kids. Yes, yeah. one of you can. Well, every- it's like saying one of you can eat ice cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But you have to bow to it. You have to bow to the ice <laughs> cream, the and then you get as much ice cream as you want. <laughs> But like, yeah. does everybody get what I'm saying? Is everybody everybody get I, a go? Presumably not. Or just it's, Harry Potter gets a go. It's like, is it a 45 minute class? Then nobody gets. Not everybody gets a go. Yeah, we a couple don't. of people get a go. But Harry Potter gets it. Do you know why? He's Harry Potter. He's Harry Potter. <laughs> He's the best kid in the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that bit where he flies around on it. I don't think that's in the book, from memory. Huh. It also seems pointless, right? But uh, you you love that spectacle though. No. Wow. I think the okay, the flying in this looks better than the previous ones. Yes. But it still doesn't look great for a lot mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. There's a few moments of conversation where like they're sitting at different tables and they'll hear and they hear like Malfoy being like, and then the bird kicked me and I was but I was really brave or whatever. And they're sitting like twenty feet away and they're like, That Malfoy is telling lies again or whatever. But you can't hear him. You wouldn't be able to, but it's it's implied that they can hear. It happens a few times in this movie, I noticed, where people are talking, they're like, did you hear Dumbledore just said this? It's like, you didn't fucking hear that. They've all got magical ears. Yeah, they, there actually is a thing called magical ears in this. Exactly. Extendable ears. But that's not what this is, Mason. Oh, I see. Yeah. Also, newspapers are dumb. I don't know why they exist <laughs> in this universe. Every day, a bird drops you a newspaper that has a picture on it that, that comes to life. What would you prefer, life. then? A phone. What do, you, what do mean? you mean? A phone, like a phone I have now. These That's, are set in the 90s though. Yeah, they're set in the 90s, okay. But surely there's something better than a bird delivering you a newspaper. Can't you just have the same newspaper and it changes every day? Oh, right. Like an iPad. Like an iPad, wow. but it's a newspaper and a bird doesn't have to they fly. They have that tender little laptop that John Con has in Terminator 2. <laughs> exactly. This is to break into the bank. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I think there was internet, like the news in the 90s on the internet was quicker than this. Uh-huh. Yeah. They should all have teletext. Probably. On their <laughs> scrolls. Yes. Uh-huh. So what's the equivalent of the newspaper? Teletext? <laughs> yes. I don't think that... I'm not even sure these movies are set in the 90s. The books are set in the 90s. Uh-huh. But I think these might not be. Wow. Yeah. Big call. I have to think about so that. So they should have had phones. They should have had phones. But I might. I, I could very well be wrong about that. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the boggets? I think, again, that is a really dangerous thing mm. to give, like to... To force children to confront their deepest fears in front in of. front of other children. What if your fear is really weird? Yeah, yeah. What if your fears like what walking in your parents having sex or something? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, lucky it's just like a snake for most people. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'd imagine most people it's not just a snake. It's something like deep and existential. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, how does it represent depression? Yeah, or like, do you do you or how does it how does it represent all your friends leave you? <laughs> I don't how, know. And how how detailed does that get? Yeah, you know, mm. does it do you do you open the thing and then is the, it's you and then all your friends are around you and they tell you horrible things about you and then they leave? Yeah, it might be that. What Could is, be an element yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Does it talk? We don't know. Yeah, I think it might be able to. Luckily, everybody has. Funny comical fears, you know? Agreed. Or big spiders. They're afraid of big spiders. <laughs> well, big spiders. Okay. I threw this out there on Twitter. Yes. Ron, and this doesn't apply in the books, he's a... What, what does he even do? Why what is do he mean? even there? He's useless. He's a, a, he's a worse wizard than everybody. Uh-huh. This happens in every book also. They... There's a misunderstanding and they don't talk for 50 pages. Yeah, right. And, I, and it, it happens kind of less in the movies, but it still happens quite a bit. Mm-hmm. He's in. Somebody tweeted this at me, and it's and it's true. In the book, he's the connection to the wizarding world. Like Hermione is the smart; she's got the research. Harry doesn't know what a magic bus is, yeah, <laughs> because he's lived in a closet for eleven years or whatever. Uh-huh. But Ron, he grew up in a magical family in the magical world, and he has an understanding of it because he's because he had it from a young age. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But that's not really. It's not really evident here. No, because and he can't. He, he he very rarely is like, I yep, I have the insider track on yeah. this. He doesn't because he's the worst wizard, as you mentioned. <laughs> he doesn't know any more than any of them. And Hermione's faster yeah. at picking stuff up. That's and right. Harry is the best. Yeah, just generally, and he's rich. Yeah, he could hire advisors or tutors <laughs> or something. You're right. Why does why is Ron in this? 
<laughs> I don't know. Anyway, look, it's not that I even hate the character. Uh-huh. I just think it's a strange addition that they don't give him that much to do. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, Sirius Black, right? I yes. just want to get back to that. Do you think it's weird that nobody tells Harry Potter the story behind that? Or even that Harry Potter doesn't even know that story? Like, he hasn't been... His, he wasn't like, how did my parents die? What are the specifics behind this? I've been in this school for three years. I've got a library and newspapers and yeah, whatever right, right, uh-huh. you don't know this but the, speci- the newspaper changes every day <laughs> can't 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 read an old edition can you You can read an old edition no, you can't though i just think it's strange that and first of all i think it's strange that they don't tell him they go you're not going to go after serious black and he's like why would i and then that's it of the scene and then he finds out later because he sne- sneaks into a cafe and they're talking about it or whatever mm-hmm, yeah. i just think it's really bizarre that they keep him in the dark about this because I think you've got more of a chance of him not doing something irrational if you talk him through it. But, you know, you take a punt with teenagers, you know? You don't know, do you? You don't know how they're going to react. Yeah. Maybe you maybe you tell him the secrets and then he... Uh... Then you know the secrets. Then you know the secrets. Yeah, yeah. the secrets. Oh. Do you know a good Alan Rickman? Uh, was that your Alan Rickman? That was my Alan. That was Alan, Alan Rickman. Rickman. <laughs> Alan Rickman. <laughs> do you know what you're going to go on? Um, Hang on. Alan Rick, Alan Rickman. <laughs> Not really, no. Not no. bad. Thank you. I practice mine. Yep. <laughs> so that's why. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Mr. Cowboy. No, it's <laughs> what? It's from Die Hard. Oh right, okay. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Oh, that really threw me. Yeah, <laughs> like, so there's a cowboy character in this movie. If only. Yeah. He's good though. I think he's. I don't think Snape is a is the people are like he's an unsung hero. He sucks. He straight up sucks. He's a bad bloke. The only uh-huh. reason he changed is because he fell in love with Harry Potter's mum and then he felt bad so he changed sides and he hates Harry. Is that why Voldemort's the villain? Because... Because Harry Potter's mum wouldn't be his girlfriend? No. Okay. Snape, that's a Snape thing. That's a Snape thing. Okay, right. Yeah, because they were friends. I'm confused the two. And why is Voldemort the bad guy then? He's, he's, he's a Nazi, basically. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. But well, he's that's also, a shame. But he's also half... Snake. <laughs> no, he's half slug, muggle, and he resents oh. himself. But he's like, pure bloods are the best thing, and I'm. Oh. Is Hermione everybody. half? She's full mine? muggle. Oh, yeah, they call them mud bloods. That's like the N word. <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> yeah, in that universe. Wait, but wait, wait, wait. But that, but he, but she isn't though, because she can do magic. No, no, because you're from that lineage. Oh. Like Draco and God, they're so racist. I know in this they're so racist. Are they own slaves. We mentioned we talked yeah, about this yeah, last yeah, time. Yeah, but yeah. It's not getting any better. No, but is that is that ever explored? But is it most, ever like, but, hey, maybe we shouldn't be so racist. Yeah, well, most people are cool with it. Oh. But it's you got your families. But like Ron is from an extended wizarding family, as is Sirius Black, as is uh, uh, not Snape, fucking Malfoy, and all those dudes are related. Like they're all their family trees intersect. Ooh. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Powerful stuff. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know that map that they yes. have yes. that can see anybody yeah. everywhere. I feel like I'm just shitting on this the entire time, but I really do like it. You can see anyone anywhere, and you, there's a very specific incantation to get that working, right? I solemnly swear I'm up to no good or whatever it is. How the hell did they figure that out? Who's they? The Weasley boys, a couple of Weasos. Well, maybe they found it. They it was oh, confiscated, they found it, right. and they okay. stole it out of. Okay, right. what's his name? Grub's office. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, the groundskeeper. Yeah, all right. Flitch, whatever his name is. Like that's like that's the equivalent of a combination lock with a thousand com- not a thousand, like a million combinations. Yeah, and right. you lock across it. Uh-huh. Yeah, or more, or more. Because you have to do it in the correct order. Yeah, as well. and you know what? These movies are also missing. What's that? It was Harry Potter's dad and his friends made that. That's that's who made that yep. that thing. Aren't they talented? Aren't they talented? In the in the books, Harry Potter's dad is a complete asshole. Like as a student, right? He's okay. really arrogant, and his Harry Potter's mum hates him, and he's mean to Snape. He's that's the, the reason, Malfoy. He's the Malfoy. That's the reason Snape is the way he is because he's this super cool magic dude and whatever. Uh-huh. But I guess he's got a heart of gold, and Harry's mo- mother's like, "You suck!" Like flat out, right? And I guess he changes for a girl or something i don't know but yeah. yeah and they explore more of that like they i don't think it's in this book or maybe it is where they go harry goes into a memory and it's just his dad just picking on snape like in, in turning many, him upside down and seeing his underwear and in stuff in many ways <laughs> these novels and movies are about overcoming the cruelty of your 
parents' upbringing, you know? Yes. So they're about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My favorite uh, Daniel Radcliffe scene is um, when he finds out that his parents were murdered by Sirius Black, or he thinks, uh-huh. and he does a bit of acting. Oh, yep. Yeah, uh-huh. And he yep. shouts, he was their friend. Yep. I'm going to kill him. I did say out loud <laughs> acting yeah. when that happened. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's weird that that man is a rat? <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah. Well, that that we throw that in the same basket as I feel the map that tells you what everybody is, <laughs> where everybody is, and what they're doing. Yeah. Does it say on a little scroll what they're doing? I I don't know. Going to the toilet currently. Yeah, maybe number twos. Number twos. But that rat is Rupert's. Is is Ron's rat? And before that, it was his brother's rat. Yeah. That's been living with that family for years. For years, just watching them shower and. Sitting yeah. in on private conversations. Who went on their stuff? Yeah, that's... Also, it's weird. When the rat man turns into a man, yep. looks a lot like a rat also when he's a man. Uh-huh. He's in clothes. But then when he shrinks back into a rat, his, his clothes, clothes disappear. disappear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're not wrong. Mate, you're not wrong. Put Jimmy, that in the bloody IMD bloopers, let me tell you. Do you have any thoughts on the serious black uh, confrontation in the shed, in the shrieking shack? Uh... Hang on, which which bit is this? When they Lupin is, it turns out that he's in on it. Oh yes, yes, yes. And Peter Pettigrew is a rat. Yeah. Who sometimes has his clothes. And they're always they're all running about and squealing. Yeah. It's pretty good. Is it? No, it's bad. <laughs> Hell, it's the the Gary Oldman character. Yes. It's a completely different character because as soon as he leaves the shack, he's like, "That was weird." Hey, do you want to live with me? Like straight yeah, right. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's insane well, for yeah. ten minutes. He's like a he's like a guy who smoked way too much weed and, <laughs> and he's become unhinged from reality. Yeah. yeah, but then he's fine. That's that's very much he. It's it's um it's Johnny in the room. Yes, it is. Absolutely. He's like I did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi, Mark. It's the same thing. <laughs> that is the equivalent. Except it's you. Hey, you want to live with me? Yeah, you want to come over with me? But Harry Potter doesn't get his way, does he? Because everybody's sad in this universe yes. or, or something. Grim. I was going to say something about that. Oh, Harry Potter is, isn't going to kill the rat man. He's like, I, w- I don't want to kill you. And the rat's like, oh, God bless you, boy. You're my yeah. favorite. And he's like, because we're going to take you back to the castle and a monster's going to suck your soul out. <laughs> right? That's dark. Yeah. What happens after that? The rat escapes. No, I mean, what happens after your soul gets sucked out? I think you're just vacant. Because I think it get, I don't, you don't see it in the movie. That's a fight worse than death in many in ways. A way, it's a real arbitrary line you've, you've drawn there, Harry Potter. The dude, spoilers for part four, you know the dude who's Mad-Eye Moody? Yes. He gets his soul sucked out before they get any information out of him in the book, I believe. I might be wrong. I haven't read in a long time, but yeah, I might be wrong. Anyway, there's a skinny werewolf, but if it bites a dog, that's fine, I think. Okay. <laughs> Is it? Don't know. <laughs> He's shaking Don't his know, head. Mate. He doesn't know. They throw a rock at it. Even though he's holding a wand. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of time travel. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's a weird element to introduce to this universe. It really is. And then it's never referred to again, right? I think they they dest- they apparently destroy all the time turners in this universe. Like it's used at some point later. And then I think after but Voldemort. why would you? Just take them away from the children. <laughs> yes. But also, I guess you don't want them banging about. But who built them? Presumably, well, yeah, somebody, presumably if somebody built them, they can, can build, build them another again. Oh, well, yeah. And maybe that's an element of the play. Or well, maybe it isn't. Oh. Mm. I, that whole time travel thing's fine and they go back and they, they fix everything, but Sirius Black has to fly away on a, on a horse or whatever. <laughs> and then that's the end. And then it ends on a really weird freeze frame. Does it? I can't remember. Do you remember when like, Harry Potter flies off into the sky? Oh, yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. And then the, the black circle kind of Warner Brothers oh, closes yeah, it nice. over him. Yeah. It's a weird ending. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't think this movie's that good. It's quite bad. I, I think it sets. I think it does change a lot of stuff, which then works better in the yeah. next movie. I think maybe, you know what, stylistically it's better. Yeah, definitely. But I feel in terms of like dialogue and characters, it's the same as the previous two. But it's not boring. No. No. Yeah. It, but it's not unpredictable. No. I mean, you definitely know who the werewolf is. You definitely know... How did you figure that out? Yeah, no, I figured that out. <laughs> you definitely know that the executioner doesn't kill the hippogriff because you don't see it die. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Did you think there was going to be time travel? Yeah. But the first time you saw it? Can't remember. <laughs> I guess why would you? Yeah, right. <laughs> What's well, kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, there's not... I don't think there's enough... 
Oh, is there? Is there? They like, hinted a little bit. It's more there, in the is, book. There's a lot of like, where did you come from? And there's a little bit of that in the movie. Yeah, right. But not okay, so much. Okay, but it doesn't yeah. seem. Yeah, there didn't seem to be that much foreshadowing. Yeah, I think maybe that's for people who were fans of the books, and like yeah, you right. know when when Hermione goes down a corridor and then appears again, you go, oh, I know what happened there. She won't t- travel through time. time travel. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you think the werewolf should have been should have quit? How do you mean? You know, because he's like, oh, because he's like, I have to leave this place now because I'm a werewolf. Maybe he, I'm, I am. He did nearly kill a bunch of kids. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Also, he sp- he takes a potion normally and it makes him docile. Okay, that's it. It's not a yeah. See that the the real life metaphor there is whiskey <laughs> for teachers. Sometimes, yeah, they can go the other way. Oh no, <laughs> I've seen it, Mason. Oh boy, I've been to teachers' Christmas parties. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Look, it's fine. I don't uh-huh. think it's I don't think it's terrible. I do think it's better than the last two. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's 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 still a movie. Okay, now it's time for Harry Potter, the one where they make him fight a dragon. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's my, might be my favorite one. It might time. be my favorite you know one. What? I, in I general. finished this one and I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of looking forward to the next one. Same. Which I'd never felt before with a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I've got, after the end of three, I'm like, oh, I've got to watch another one before we can talk about it. And then I'm like, oh, no, actually, I'll watch, I'll watch the next one. Have you not soon. seen the ones from here on out? No, I've seen, I think I've seen all of them except the last one. Oh, man. Yeah, they're good from here I've on. seen Snape Kills Dumbledore. Spoiler Snum- alert. Snumbledore. Snumbledore. Yeah. And then I haven't seen the one after that, which is, is the last one? No, there's two it, after there's that. There's two. Okay, I haven't seen yeah. it. Okay, I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm two behind. This movie was going to be split into two book, two movies initially because the book's Ooh. quite long. Ooh. It's it's like comparatively amazing. And if you, that's three yeah. and this is four. Oh, that's a bigger. Yeah, that's a, that is a that, bigger. That's a bigger. <laughs> that's a bigger. Okay, so it opens with Voldemort is a is a weird little creep baby. That was, and I was going to say it doesn't open in at the Dursleys' house. Yeah, do you know why? Because apparently they wanted more money and they were no, you're not that important. Oh, the Dursleys did. Yeah, that I, is a family unit. The actors <laughs> playing the Dursleys. Yeah, they got they the guy unionized. From the pie in the sky guy. Wow, Father Brown. Yep, whatever uh-huh. his bloody name is. Uh-huh. And he uh, solves murders as Father Brown. He does. What? He's, there's a there's a it's a different like a BBC. To, to, Pie in the Sky. It's a different. It's series. a different series. Is he a murder solver in Pie in the Sky? Is he a don't chef? No. Uh, yeah. He's mm-hmm. dead in real life. Uh, well, that's a shame. Yeah. He does seem too old from these in these movies from the get go, though. Don't <laughs> yeah, you think? Great. Yeah. Like too old to be. Yeah. They both seem too old to have the kid as at that age. Yeah. So she's the sister of Harry Potter's mum, who's right. the best woman in the universe, and yes. has passed that on to Harry. I mean, she's a real bitch, obviously. <laughs> Well, that's what they say, yeah. isn't it? Uh, this also introduces David Tennant, who does yes. a weird tongue licking thing, which is completely unnecessary, mm-hmm. which is apparently improv uh, because Terrific. it gives that away way too early because uh, he's, he's, he's a spooky eyed man. Yes, right. I think that's a great character, the spooky eyed man. I was going to say, I would be. Did you I... pick that? No, I don't think so at the time, yeah. no. Mm. But. Um... Oh, you have seen this one? Yeah, I have seen this one. Okay. Yeah. Again, I've seen all except the last time. Oh, right, yeah, you said that. Uh, I would like to see maybe if you if we're doing more Fantastic Beast movies and I know they are yeah. maybe put a Mad Eye Moody in there before he loses, yeah it could work before yep. he gets the Mad Eye yeah before he gets the robot leg yeah yeah it's got a robot leg is it a robot leg or is it's it a metal a, leg metal leg it's yeah. got like bones and stuff he was in a box for a year huh <laughs> I think he would have lost some weight you know what I mean <laughs> that's brutal you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, we didn't see him come That's out. True, maybe yeah. he was very trim. Yeah, he maybe. just had big baggy clothes. Yeah, yeah. But I love that character. I even though he's a he's a spooky, terrifying David Tennant guy, I think he's really engaging in the way that the werewolf guy isn't. Yes, right. I think the werewolf guy, I always pictured him as Ewan McGregor. I okay. think a disheveled Ewan McGregor would have made a better role. I think right. he gets he does more interesting stuff. He's better in But I, I just don't really like that movie that much, I guess. Uh-huh. But uh Daniel Radcliffe is way better in this. Agreed. He's really good. He's got. Is this his biggest hair? It's definitely his biggest hair. Uh-huh. But he also, you notice that he's a short guy. This is the one where you notice. Yeah, right. Because uh-huh. he stands across from Draco, who's like two feet taller. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because in the books, Harry's like six foot or whatever. Oh, is he? Yeah, okay, he goes right. up tall huh. and strong and handsome. Oh, tall, or strong boy. Yeah, that's it. Wow. But, uh, he's all, this is also the palest he's ever been. And I think <laughs> it's part. Is it good you see him with his shirt off? No, I think I think it's more. I think it's lighting, but it's also like because they've also hit that awkward teen year where they're all acne ridden and whatever. And yeah, it's right. just like just just paint them down, <laughs> just paint them down with makeup. We don't need to see any of that. Just really spray it on. Well, apparently, I think it was this one where they do a lot of CGI tweaks to 
like background actors for oh, acne, that might be acne, it. Okay. acne, acne and stuff. Yeah, right, so okay. that de- definitely could be an element of it. This is the first movie where the Weasley twins are interesting as well. Because yep. they're supposed to be these crazy jokesters in the books and they're always pranking and being rad dudes and they're the coolest kids in schools and uh-huh. they're always doing a kickflip or whatever the, the equivalent of yeah, the, the sure. wizard equivalent of that is. Yep. But you never really see it. They're kind a of a wand flip. A wand flip. You know, you don't see much of that, but this movie they're a little bit more animated. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? I would agree because with that. Because everybody's got long hair in this, if you can <laughs> believe it. Ah, oh, so much hair going so on. So good. The stadium where they go watch the the Wizard World Cup is garbage. Just a weird rickety. Yep. Why is uh, you know? And also, there's that other. You know what? There's a, then there's that bit as well where they're like, uh, everybody gather around the boot. We're all gonna around the boot. And Harry's like, what's going on? And they're like, that's a teleport boot, you moron. <laughs> Harry, you idiot. Touch the boot. And he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Quick, let go of the boot. Remember that? Yeah. They're in the. Tell him in advance. <laughs> He could die. Yeah, he could die. Yeah. Yeah, and then just he just tumbles out of the air. I mean, yeah. a few of them do. Yeah. This introduces Cedric Digger- Diggory yeah, right. as uh, the first role of Robert There's a Pattinson. lot of people, I said I was watching this, and they're like, oh, that one's got Cedric Diggory. Yeah, people love him. He's in one movie, right? Yeah. And he dies. Yeah. Did he have a more rich? Did he have a richer backstory in the books or something? Yeah, he's, he's a pretty prominent character, yeah. I oh. like him. He's a good character. But he never comes back, right? Uh, well, th- there's stuff about him in the play, oh, but I'm not going to, but it, it, it's, right. it's complicated. All I'm not right. going to get into it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But no, he doesn't, in the movies, he doesn't come back. All right. Uh, so I don't understand. It's, it's that thing again in this movie where Malfoy's like, look at these low lives in this stadium. We're sitting with a minister or whatever. Who cares? This stadium <laughs> sucks. It all sucks. doesn't matter where you're standing. It's all, it's all bad. You're just on a <laughs> vertical wall behind a scaffolding. Yeah. Even if you're sitting with the minister. Yeah. It sucks. Any moment, some, some <laughs> people on brooms could crash through your <laughs> head. Yeah, yeah. Through, right through your head, mate. Yeah. So, and, and even bits like... The, but this, is, this goes back to everything is shitty and rickety in this universe. Yeah. You remember when the flying... Carriage comes in with the horses. Yep. It's just tumbling through the air. There's people in that. Yeah. But it's just spiraling out of the sky. Yeah. It's absolute madness. This is another moment where I think, how does Harry Potter not know this? So after the the wizard festival or whatever, yep. the, the, the broomstick competition, uh-huh. uh, it's more detailed in the book, but basically Crumb gets the, the snitch. But Crumb the, gets the snitch. <laughs> but, uh-huh. And he gets <laughs> stitches. <laughs> and whatever. Rhyme, right, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know, I get it. But the Irish get more points. So they the win. Irish do get more points. Yeah, so they, they win. Also, wait, wait, isn't the rule that if you get the snitch, you win no matter what? No, no, you get like 120 oh, you get tw- points. Okay, right, okay, right. But Everybody the Irish should got just, more, more points that's than right. that. So don't get the snitch. Yeah. Just wait till you have more points and then get the snitch. Crumb yeah. He's a glory hog. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. bet he doesn't pass. You know what I mean? If that's a thing in this stupid game, <laughs> but so the dark mark gets put in the air. The this this move, I, I just if I can cut you off, and sure. I'm going to. This also, this movie also marks the first time anyone said, "Oh my God, it's the Bulgarians," <laughs> or whatever it is. I'm paraphrasing there. Yeah, but they're all, everybody's really excited about the Bulgarians. Everyone's being excited there. about the Bulgarians. Were yeah. you not excited? I was a little bit excited for the. They Bulgarians. all just look like blockhead meanies. That's yeah, what they they look true. like. But uh, so there's a dark mark goes up in the sky, which is a it seems too complicated. Is it a skull with a snake? Some of the snake coming out of it or whatever. But again, it's one of those things where Harry's like, "What? What's that? Come on, man! Like, how do you not? <laughs> like, you've been at school for this is your fourth year. This is the dude who yeah, killed your right. parents, uh-huh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Snape has a tattoo of this. You know, what I mean, he wears <laughs> robes, but come on, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even if you didn't know specifically, what, what do you it is, think it is? You'd be like. Look, I'm no fourth year student wizard, but that's bad that's news. That's bad news. And then, of course, the ministry comes in and they're like, this boy Harry Potter summoned the Dark Mark or whatever, which is a, there's a long history in these books and movies of nobody believing Harry Potter, even though he's always right. He's always right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. <laughs> he always has the best intentions or he's right. Yeah. But, uh, and then that, they go back to school and instead of uh, doing school for a year, they have a weird student Olympics, <laughs> yeah. which is apparently important. So, so hang on. So when, if we can go back and say when Harry, that Harry Potter's always being blamed. Yeah. Is there in the background some sort of conspiracy to always blame Harry Potter? 
Is there some plot? There's a there's elements of that, but it's mostly just general public paranoia and the media, the fake oh, news. Mason, yeah, fake news, absolutely. Coming at yeah. it. Okay, that makes sense. That's generally it. Well, there, there is fake news in this in this movie. Yes, there's that there lady. Is. Yeah, it's all about fake Rita news. Rita Seeker, oh. Skeeter, whatever. Oh, Rita Seeker, Skeeter. Rita Seeker. But oh. anyway, basically they. They shut down everybody's school year and yeah. drag people in from another school for a year so they can watch some dumb fucking sports event, which is apparently the most important thing in wizarding history. Who gives a shit? It's inter-school sports. You'll be immortalized <laughs> forever as a champion. That's my Michael Gambon and Dumbledore. Yeah. And Harry Potter's name. You're right. Who cares? Who cares? And also, genuine physical harm could be befall you for no reason. <laughs> I mean, and they say that as well. They're like, you could die in this. And there's definitely moments where Harry would have been smashed to bits by that dragon. He would have drowned. Uh, yeah. That maze the would have other struggled. students would have drowned. Like Hermione could yeah. have drowned. Yeah. Or what, I don't know how. I wasn't 100% paying attention when that happened, but they did put her underwater for a long time. Yeah. So what do you think of those underwater models? Bad. Yeah, real bad, right? <laughs> no good. It's But it's like... You you could be horribly mangled to death or or burned to a crisp or smashed under some rocks or drowned, but why don't you volunteer? And then people are <laughs> don't ask t- t- dumbass teenagers. You'd be like, hey teenagers, you want to ride in the back of that bus? And they're like, yeah. And then they definitely sc- crack their heads on the pavement. <laughs> no, don't suggest these things to them. Don't let them do it. For glory. No. Also, three events for a year. Yeah, it's wild, right? It's not a lot. Yeah. It's mm. not a lot, right? It's really not. Yeah. And also, th- there's yeah, uh, th- there's a moment in in the. It's like okay, now everybody has to the first event fight a dragon. <laughs> everybody else successfully fought the dragon. Now it's your turn, Harry. Show us the other two. Yeah. Well, we in the well actually, I got a, I got a note about that. Oh yes. Uh, first of all, they make him fight a dragon. Yep. Uh, it's bizarre that. He didn't just put his broomstick in a tree near him so he could grab it because he waited quite a long time for it to turn up. A thought I had during these this, this these yeah. events is it doesn't appear to be there to be any rules as to what you can and cannot <laughs> utilize to complete the tasks. Or is there though? It seems like it'd be like if you were doing the hundred meter dash at the Olympics, yeah, and you just got a bike out, <laughs> like you had a bike. <laughs> hidden by the side of the track and you went hang on and you got the bike and then you did it that is the equivalent it, i feel surely like though, there's a rule against you it. couldn't get on the bike Fast quick enough, enough to win yeah, but no, you're t- maybe the 400 yeah maybe the 400 yeah but exactly. i don't yeah, disagree yeah. with that or a car or a car you got a car yeah. just idle, idling well he just summoned the fastest broom in the world <laughs> right <laughs> yes, the fastest broomstick in the world <laughs> To yeah. do this, like surely that's against the rules. Yeah, definitely. I can't believe he walked out and didn't look around. He just walks out and he's like, sees the egg and he's like, oh yeah. Just and then he egg. nearly gets smashed. Yeah. Like he's so close to dying. Yeah. Is somebody there with like a spell to stop him from getting hit? It didn't seem like it. But even if there is, or like a, I've got the healing charms or whatever. If if that thing cracks your skull open, <laughs> if your brain goes from one corner of the, the field to the other corner of the field, you're dead. Yes. I don't care. I don't care how many time turners there are. In fact, if all the time turners were destroyed allegedly, <laughs> maybe you should have saved some for putting that kid's brains back in his head. <laughs> so what what is also bizarre about this though, and we'll get back to the dragon when they okay. make him fight a dragon, is that his name goes in the the the, the cup, and then there's some Michael Gambon like. Hey, did you put your did you put your name in the quiz yes, tournament yeah, right. or whatever? It's really bizarre. Yeah, it's a it's a very out of character, even for this version of the character. Yeah, right. Uh huh. The way he rushes into the room and just just, <laughs> yeah, just grabs <laughs> Potter, it. Yeah. So there's that element. You're such of it. a renegade, Harry Potter. Except you never are. <laughs> you never have been. We've always assumed it about you. Hundred points. Yes. <laughs> but. And then the second part, which you may be getting to, yeah. is then they're just like, well, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also, fine. And they also all realise that his name is in there for a reason. Yeah. And it's probably a bad thing. It's definitely a trap. But, yeah. Why would it not? Well, this has never happened in the thousand years we've been doing this. Mm. But it's Harry Potter, the guy everyone's always trying to kill. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Also, what I, it, it, how is it... That you can put some sorcery on this this ancient artifact, yeah. the Goblet of Fire, to make it do that. Yes. But you can't, like, scan it to see if that's been done. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Surely there should be some some. Surely there should be like the the wizard equivalent of IT support, who's just like, "Yep, this has been tampered with." Actually. Yeah, right. Well, you think it's been Dumbledore. tampered with by him actually? Yeah, yeah that's it's got, got. You can I can tell because of the well. Wands also have a memory, so you, can, you know their previous spells. Oh, what? Yeah, I think that's a thing. Oh, yeah. So just grab everyone's wand and snap them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to take. Well, the- probably you could definitely go. Well, that's bloody Mad Eye Moody. Did it yeah. Mad Eye Moody? It might have been, or he could have put Karkarov under the spell to do it. Or yeah, whatever. Yeah, probably could have put Karkarov. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, okay, I'm going to jump ahead. All right. You know, how you could make somebody do things with a spell. Yeah, you, and, and a lot of people were like, "Well, we're under the in- Invictus Curse or whatever it is." So you, you're doing the Dark Lord's bidding, right? And people were like, "We didn't know who was doing it and who wasn't." Their eyes are white. Those are the people that were doing it. Everybody else was just regular people. Yeah, right. Just deciding to do it by themselves. Maybe they wore magical contact lenses. Maybe they wore contact lenses, But that yeah. seems a little like... Yeah, uh-huh. You look like a zombie. Yeah, you're right. A, you're a walking zombie. It's bizarre to me. But I just... I don't understand why they don't go... Okay, Harry. So you're in this tournament... Uh, magically and legally, you can't get out. Ministry official Barty Crouch Sr. <laughs> insists that after being selected, the champions are bound by a contract. Well, he's the bad guy, isn't he? He is the bad guy, and he, and he winds up dead. Yeah. But you know what? He just it, When he's got to fight the dragon, yeah. he just doesn't get the egg. He walks out, and he walks back into the tent. And that's what the teachers tell him, because he could die, and because someone's trying to murder him. Why does he have to compete in any of this stuff? Yeah, right? Just trade water for an hour. Yeah, and then you sure. lose. You're last. Yeah, yeah. You could just go. You could you could go out into the thing, see the egg, and go. Oh, I'm feeling so faint. Yeah, I'll, I'm falling over now. But he's the best. Yeah, I guess he's the best. But I do like that the only reason he wins is because he's helped. Like he doesn't win because he's good. For a lot of it, people are like, "Listen, yeah. do this specific thing, yep. and you will win." Because he's not supposed to be there. So I like that element. All of right, it. okay. I love this movie. Actually, again, <laughs> I feel very strongly like if again a hundred meter dash. And I was like, hey, Usain Bolt, can I get a piggyback ride? And then he does it. And you both win? Yeah, we both win. But I shouldn't win. But you both win. We both, that's true, we yeah. both win. Okay. So when and there was another moment in that where they're like, well, Harry, you've, you technically were last or something, but because you were brave, I guess you're not, you, you're you second, second or something. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> that's not the rules. No. You've changed the rules. Look, everybody did the 100 meter dash. <laughs> Much faster than you. Yeah. But you saw a scary dog and you kept running. <laughs> so I guess you're yeah, now the winner. Well, it's like at the Olympics when somebody falls, right? Yeah. And it's such a big deal when somebody stops and helps them up because they fall yeah. for the place. Yeah. And whenever it does happen, when it really does, it's amazing. Right. But they don't win. No. They, they're also disqualified. It's very presumably. much that thing of like, 100 points for Harry Potter. You're, yeah. you know, you're oh, the yeah. bravest boy in the school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is the dragon thing I was going to say. This is, this is from the book. Uh, Victor Crumb against the Chinese fireball uses the conjunctivitis curse to blind the dragon. However, he was docked points when the dragon stumbled and smashed half of the real eggs. Wait, what? The dragon that they're using yes. has real eggs that it's guarding. Oh, it's offspring, presumably. And he <laughs> got it to kill its own eggs. Wow. So he got some points docked. Wow. So that's, that's crazy, right? Yeah, uh-huh. That they would... Do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Committed genocide, that kid did, is what happened. Look, and I think I, we, we've said this every time we bring up Harry Potter, but I think it bears repeating, perhaps we've got some new listeners, yeah. um, that, and it, it's something that you said when we watched these movies originally, that I have since been saying as if it were my own okay. to other people in private, it's that these this Triwizard Cup is the equivalent in real life, if we're going back to real life, of taking mm. some school children putting them on a helicopter and dropping them into a prison riot. <laughs> yes, it is. Maybe, I said technic- that? Okay. Maybe, maybe, they get a, maybe they get a gun. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Or maybe they're killed immediately. Yeah. Te- no, technically, <laughs> they could survive this, but the odds are pretty slim, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. a good metaphor. Thank you. Man, I was setting trends yeah, even were, way back. Really were. That was before this show I said that? Maybe, probably. Wow, good on me. Uh, so, Moaning Myrtle's weird, right? Oh, yeah, the weird ghost that's all pervin on people. I looked up... Getting in your bath and I stuff. I looked up how old she was. Yes. She's 40 in this movie. Oh, and Harry she's Potter's 40. 14. Yeah, I mean, she's not it's... supposed to be 40. She's supposed to be a student. She's a student who got killed by the basilisk. But she's been around for 40 years. Yeah, No, she's... The actor... Oh, the actor's 40. ...is 40. Oh, no. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> that is weird. But I guess if they want to... No, I see, I see why they did that. Why? Because she's supposed to look like a, a student, but also she's been around for way too long. 
That's why she how ghosts old. work, is it? The, this, this is how this goes. One works. of them sometimes John Cleese in early movies, yeah. I think. Yeah. Good on him. He's nearly headless Nick. Anyways, uh, Trial 2 is the crowd just staring at a lake for an hour. Yeah, there's no underwater cameras. I don't there's get no, it. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Because they'd have the... They've got stone bowls that you can see shit in or whatever. <laughs> right. But just stare at a lake. Yeah. And just uh-huh. wait for somebody with a shark head to reappear. Yeah. You don't know what they're doing. There's no... <sighs> so, and, uh, so so I, I maybe I tuned out slightly during this point. But the idea is you've got... They put your friends underneath the water. Yeah, they steal them. They put them they underwater. They steal your friends. They put them under... And then you have to free them. Yeah. But you could be killed by weird piranha squid creatures. Yes. Also, it's not in any of the movies, but there's a giant octopus that lives in that lake. Huh. Mm. Could kill you, though. Yes. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Along with everything else that lives and in then, that lake. And then, you're, and then you're allowed to use any magical means at your disposal yep. to go underwater. Yeah. So you can turn into a shark or you can grow gills. Or, or you bubble, can do whatever the third person did. Bubble face. You bubble. bubble over the face. Oh yeah, okay. That would be that would probably they be did the best that. One. Yeah, did they? Yeah. Okay. The two, two two others did it. Cool man. I find it bizarre that Harry Potter and his friends couldn't work out a breathing underwater spell. Spell. Yeah. Don't you think that's uh like you just go to the underwater section of the library or whatever? I'd imagine that would yeah. be really accessible. Yeah. Or you could what you could do potentially is if you couldn't do that, find a spell that makes a straw really long <laughs> and just put it above. Put it above the well, water. You, you could just have an oxygen tank, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you, any number of things. You could go to just go to the, the, the diving store and yeah. buy one. Get one of James Cameron's little submarines. Open a portal to a diving store in the real world and steal it. Yeah. Because apparently nothing is off limits, including <laughs> crime, to win these things. So yeah, get a little submarine. That's all great stuff. Mm. Uh, and the drain la- the lake. Drain the lake. Yeah, you could drain the lake. Yeah. And everyone would fall to their death. No, because they're under their own sticks or something. No, no. I mean, no. Everybody else in the, else in the competition. So you wait. You jump in last. You get rid of the water. Yeah. Everybody falls to their death. Yeah. Then you go. Down oh, you and... just it just pops out of existence. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I was gonna say put a big like a black hole. Oh yeah. At the, and then then the water would go down, and then you just get them off the sticks. Nice. Yeah. These are all great ideas. We've got so many good. We would have been great at Hogwarts. Or turn into a shark. You could turn into a shark. That'd yeah. Be pretty good. Is that yeah. illegal? You go to jail for turning into half a shark. It is against God's will, so yes, I think he would. <laughs> so that kid went to jail. <laughs> I want to be clear, in this universe, God exists and he's really mad at all the things that are happening. <laughs> okay, so the last uh, the last trial is again... Uh, I can't remember what it is. It's a maze. Oh, yeah, you just got to... You go into a maze. a maze, but if you're in the audience, you just stare at a maze. <laughs> That's what you do yep. for an hour. That's true. Like it's it's You'd think the fighting the dragon would be last... Yeah, I, th- I feel it's the most dangerous. Yes, and also it's the most visually exciting. When they're like, "This maze will make you go mad, and you'll go, you'll never get out of it, or whatever." It's just a bit scary. In the yeah. in the book, you got to like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in it. Like, you got to get you, there's like a sphinx asks you a riddle, and if, if you don't get it, it'll beat you to death. Like oh, there's terrific. stuff like that. Yeah. But there's none of that. It's just the walls close in or whatever. And but then so that culminates in. And this is where this movie gets really interesting, I feel. Because it's all kind of fun and games. Yeah. And then a boy gets murdered. <laughs> he really does, yeah. yeah. So they go to the... to the, to the a, They get teleported. Oh, okay, Mad-Eye Moody, right? It's not Mad-Eye Moody, it's, 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 it's David Tennant. David Tennant, yeah. I can't believe that the entire plan was to have Harry Potter do so well in the tournaments leading up to the maze that he'd get a little bit of a head start and hopefully touch the cup first. Yeah, right. And, and go to the, the graveyard. Yeah, but you know you what can, they could have done. You could turn any item, like a boot, into a teleportation device. He could have said, "Harry, pick up that pencil." You get him <laughs> turn one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bam! Sure. You're in the yeah. graveyard. Yeah, yeah. You say, "Hey, hey, Harry, what's that over there?" And he looks, and you put a you put a pillowcase over his head, and you stick the golden <laughs> snitch in there. You zip tie it. He's no, dead. Voldemort wanted his blood, so he's impervious to Harry Potter's love uh, magic. There would be there would be plenty of blood in that in that <laughs> pillowcase. <laughs> Let me tell you, it'd be like a soup in there after that snitch has gotten trying to escape there. <laughs> it would knock out both his eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Uh, so Wait, what's the plot again? He goes in and there's, there's, a, there's an evil snake man. Oh, yeah. he's, a, he's a Ray Fiennes boy. Yeah, yeah. But before he goes in there, I find it really interesting. Wait, but why do you need the blood? 
Because he's, he's, then he can touch Harry Potter. Because if you oh, remember yeah, in the yeah, first yeah, Harry yeah. Potter, he touches Harry Potter. And, Harry, and he disintegrates. And he disintegrates because yeah. yeah. he's Harry Potter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He can't do that anymore. Um, but Harry Potter still gets pain from his scar when he looks at him or touches um, him or whatever. But that goes away. It's a whole thing. Yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. seen it or read yeah. it, so I won't tell you. But so it's Harry's compassion and fair sportsmanship that gets Cedric killed. Because it's his idea to yeah, rescue right. him and then be like, Let's touch this cup together. Oh, he gets yeah. him killed. Mm-hmm. I think that's really great. Not great. You is know there any? Mean? Does he ever think about it ever again? I mean, he's yes. sad afterwards. He's definitely sad. They talk about it a bit in the next book, and I'm not sure uh, if they okay. so much in the next movie. I mm-hmm. can't really remember, but yeah, I like that element of it. That it's it's his compassion that kind of got this kid killed, and it's really sad when he comes back and his dad figures it out. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, "Hooray, they're back!" Yeah, there's the music Yay. going and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, One million ma- points, <laughs> Harry Potter. It's gr- oh, no. The dead boy gets no points. Yes. Uh, what yeah. house was the dead boy in? <laughs> Take some points off that house for a dead boy. <laughs> so the Voldemort, Voldemort showdown I like. I think Ray finds is really good. Yep. Uh, they CGI off his nose. He's a bit spooky. Uh, oh. The rat man's there. Is that the first time we see proper Voldemort yes. in the movies? Yes. We see him as a little baby. We yep. see him as a snake on the back of a man's head. Yeah. We see him as a memory in a diary. Yeah, right. But this in, the, is, in the pensy. Yeah. But mm. I think he's a really... He's played really well and he's really creepy and like weird translucent skin. And yeah, right, he right. used to he used to look like a man and he yeah, kind okay. of... All the dark magic that he's kind of been dicking oh, around with right. turned him into a weird snake man. But mm-hmm. did you like the the confrontation? I'm still not 100 percent sure why he's evil. Like I know he said he's a Nazi. Yeah, because he he wants to rule everybody and yeah. uh, and but why is enslave, he that way? But he wants to enslave Muggles because he was he grew up all weird. He grew up in an orphanage. He basically had Harry Potter's life, oh, but he's evil. Right. And when there's a there's different a, cupboard, different yeah. There's a bit where. Michael Gambon's character in a flashback. It's actually set 10 years after the Jude Law one, so it makes no sense. Those guys are not the same. <laughs> Young Uldor is killing it. He's got a twinkle in his eye. Ah, so twinkly. Yeah. But the old guy, not as much. But uh, where he goes in, you, you see where he finds uh, Young... His name's, his name's Tom Riddle because uh-huh. he's just a regular orphan boy. He doesn't know that he's magic. Oh. But he's like, hey, did you realize you were special? And he's like, oh, yeah, I can make people in pain if I want to. And I can set things on fire and I steal things. And he's like... Oh, you're a serial killer. Yeah, he's like... So from the get-go, Dumbledore's the only one who's like, this kid's not right. Better train him. Yeah, better, better train him. give him more skills. <laughs> yeah. But he's the only kind of teacher... He tricks every other teacher mm-hmm. be- because... And he's so wrapped that he's special and whatever. Yeah, right. But and but all the other teachers fall for it. But he's because he saw it from day one. He's like, this kid's uh, something wrong with his well, brain. I mean, why you wouldn't word up any of the other teachers, would you? Well, he wasn't. Because you princi- want to be special. Dumbledore <laughs> wants to be special, doesn't he? Yes, but he wasn't principal. Even <laughs> so, just <laughs> yeah. take him out for a drink at the end of Friday knockoff drinks. Yeah, be like, hey, that Tom Riddle, he's gonna try and kill you. Yeah. And he does. Or take Tom Riddle out for a drink and shoot him in the head. Or yeah. snitch in the pillowcase. Snitch in the pillowcase, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Is there like is there like in the Harry Potter universe, is there like like a, a room where magic doesn't work or something? Or like a, you know That's like a good a, question. I'm sure there's the equivalent. I don't know. It's like a you know, like a like a you put a bag on their head and the ma- <laughs> their magic doesn't work, something like that. There's gotta be something. Right. I'm sh- I'm sure there's anti something yeah, something. Okay, right. yeah. I mean, okay. you know those cages that they're in. I'm sure they do something. They're oh enchanted. yeah, good point actually. Yeah, but I, I don't. But it doesn't stop you turning into a dog and escaping, does it? <laughs> no, mm. I guess it doesn't. Mm. Uh, Why would you stay in the prison that long if you knew you could turn into a well, dog? Well, I just and thought escape? he was content. Oh right. Okay. Like he was like whatever. I got him, and Voldemort's dead. So who cares? It's my life. Mm. Also, I, I turned into a dog illegally, so I should be here. Yeah, it's actually but, a good point. Well, yeah. in the book. And you, this is hinted at in the movie. He sees the photo of Ron's parents in uh, in Egypt, yeah. and he sees the rat, and he's like, "Oh shit!" So that's why right. he breaks. I out. recognize that rat. Yeah, he's a real pervert. That's <laughs> son of a bitch. I like the inclusion. He's probably looking at all the Weasleys in the nude. <laughs> I like the inclusion of Harry's parents in this. Mm-hmm. They come back through the the because you know the the their brother sister ones. They've got the same unicorn oh, hair in right. it or some uh-huh. shit. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Like, all right, yeah, mate. I get yeah. it. That's, yeah, all right. Now, is that actually them or is that just like... It's an echo. Okay, right. But uh, yeah, I guess because it's not explained, but the people who come out of the wand are the last people that he's killed. 
in the order. Uh, okay. There's also supposed to be an old man in there. The old man comes out in the book. I don't think he does in the uh-huh. movie because you know the old man he kills at the start. Oh yeah, the 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 cleaner or the custodian. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. Uh-huh. So the it's lighthouse keeper. Cedric, the old man. He looks like a lighthouse keeper. It, I don't think he is. <laughs> yeah. Cedric and the parents and uh, and yeah and then the parents are whatever. All right. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Huh. And then he. Who else is going to be in that one? I will tell you what. Good thing that bloody cut worked as well to get him back. Yep. Like the magic didn't wear off, so that's good. <laughs> and then it turns out that old Mad Eye Moody's a weird little David Tennant snake yeah, man right. or whatever, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and he's got the his tongue and he's in the case. Yep. He sat up. He sat. He, he really cramped in that. Yeah. <laughs> little that case. case. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's all good stuff. Anyway, I think this movie's great, even though. <laughs> I've made fun of it for a lot of it. Look, even though stop giving incredibly powerful weapons of mass destruction to children. Yeah. It's pretty good. I like this one. And again, I'm looking for... Uh, having watched this, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of jazzed for the next one. Should we try and... Well, when's... Let me find out when uh, Fantastic Beasts 2 is out. Because maybe we'll get another one in this year. We can get another win. I think it's like October... No, November maybe? Yeah, November 16th. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, it's, it's August now, so... We didn't do one last year. That's so true, maybe yeah. we'll, we'll do the next two when... Uh, oh, this, this how many do we have one? left then? Four. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could do just one then if you wanted. No, let's do um, two and a... Wait, how many's left? Four. Okay. It's uh, uh, the prophecy... <laughs> it's okay, of, you don't have to list them. I'm going to list them. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the Order of the Phoenix, yep. Half-Blood Prince... Deathly Hallows Part and Two, Ooh. Part One and Two. Okay, yeah, and then we're back to Fantastic Beasts. All right, we can make two and two. I still think in ten years from now they're going to Force Awakens this shit. They're going to bring everybody back. They're going to make the Cursed Child into a trilogy or something, and it's going to make four billion dollars. Wow, be yeah. cool. And if you don't like it, Mason, yes, do you like it? You okay with that? I'm going to say hypothetically speaking, just to see what you're going to say. Mm. I don't like it. That's okay. Huh. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> and that's the end of Harry Potter. Hooray! Who knows what he'll get up next time. To, I next mean, everybody time, who's next watched time. all the other movies and read the, all the other books. Why are his clothes know. so crap if he's got so much money? Good question. <laughs> I Why had was that, he so sad when they... I when had that grey jacket with the white line down the sleeve. Oh, the, the track jacket. He, he had a dirty track jacket. Yeah, you better believe yeah, it. It, it wasn't like, my jacket. There was two jackets. That looked, there was, no, it's a different jacket. I remember Claire all threw your, that jacket I remember out. all your jackets. I remember <laughs> okay, your dirty good. track jacket, all right? <laughs> good. Um, why is he so sad that he's won, that his, that his uh, broomstick broke when he can just buy another one? That's a good question. Because it's great. Just buy another one. You're rich. You didn't need to. You got given one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he would be given one, wouldn't he? <laughs> he was, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know what it's time for? Oh, is it time for what we're reading? Yes, it is. And what we're going to read? It is. I'm doing the things. What are we reading today? <laughs> hey, man, what are you reading? Uh, I've been watching Final Space. I watched that. What'd you think? Got better. See, it's, yeah, the, see, I'm like four in. Yeah. And boy, that character's little, the main character's very great. Isn't he? Yeah, he really is. Is it the voice? It's the voice, and I don't. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, he strikes me very much as a Zap Brannigan character, but it's which not doesn't work as a main character. No. But I know a lot of people who, who've who've who binged this and loved it. I enjoyed it. I, I by the end, I I was. I I'm enjoying it. it more, but yeah. I but it's and the but the only reason I've got I got through the first two or three is because a number of people said, "Are you watching Final Space? You got to watch Final Space. Yeah. It's so good." But it's no as as far as. Animated shows on Netflix, it is no, for example, Bojack Horseman. No. For, as an example. Or Rick and or Morty, which is also on some Netflix yes, versions. Yes, that's right. We've got it, don't we? We sure do. Yeah, no, I'd say definitely stick with it, but I wouldn't say that character is good. <laughs> yeah. He's not even like Lister, Dave Lister, Red Dwarf. No, and this this show is kind of... It's he's shades, not lovable at all. No, it's shades of... He's just... Exactly, he's irredeemably annoying. Mm. Uh but, I mean, but he does have a bit of a tragic backstory that they get into, but I still don't think that... Yeah. I think I everybody think... else is more interesting than he is. For everybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, Final yeah. Space is an animated show, and it's about a guy named Gary yes. who pretended to be a like a spaceship captain. Yep. And it's in the future, and he, and he accidentally destroyed a whole bunch of spaceships. And so he's been sentenced to live and work on a spaceship on his own, sort of out in deep space. Yeah. And then he encounters a friendly little alien creature that is actually a weapon of mass destruction, uh, and he has to protect it. And David Tennant's the bad guy. David Tennant is the bad guy. These are all the true He's always things. getting around being the bad guy, isn't he? Do you like him? 
Yeah, I do like him. He's very charming. Me too. Uh, and he's also uh, Scrooge Doctor McDuck. Who? What? Scrooge McDuck. Oh, the new one, is he? He's the new Scrooge McDuck. Have you seen any of that show? Not yet, no. Yeah. I heard it's uh, good. Yeah. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what a final space. I don't know. Yeah, and it, it, I guess the more you watch it, the more the personalities of the characters emerge. Yes. But they're a little... Because it's, it, it's con- some of them are quite faceless. Yeah. But I guess as we... Because there's, you know... Because there's the ship's computer and there's also the little there's an AI android that, drone There's his friend thing. and there's a whole bunch of faceless kind of robots that yeah. run about. Yeah. But then we get the little... We get Moon, pot, moon Cake, who's the, yeah. little, the little weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. We get the Catman. Yeah. Mm. Catman's good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, yeah, I think... Well, you don't have to stick with it because I'm a big proponent of not sticking with a thing just because it gets better yeah, later. Yeah, right. But uh, if, if if you're okay with it, I'm going to yeah. give it a couple more. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think you'll be all right by then. Yeah, I I liked it enough where I'll watch the next season. All right, okay. I'll at least start it and see where it goes. Why is that though? Is it because the characters grow on you, or because the the story? I think the story engaging? elements of it. Yeah, but the character does grow on you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Yeah, what yeah. A fungus. I bought tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed <laughs> Child or whatever. The, the stage show, which is coming to Melbourne. I bought this five tickets. Next year, right? And I, luckily I can write this off as a business expense because, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> they are very expensive. Uh-huh. And uh, I've read the play. Anyway, I've read the book, but I, I wanted to see it. And now I will see it next June. So that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> He's hoping you don't hate Harry Potter by then. I'm sure I will. But uh, yeah, no, I am looking forward to it. I just wish it wasn't as expensive as it was as it is. Yeah. You'd think it'd be cheaper because like a lot of... Well, I was going to say you'd think it'd be cheaper because a lot of parents would want to take their kids. Yeah. But that's exactly the position you want. That, that's that right. These people want you to be in. Yeah. That you've got kids. You've got a whole bunch of kids that want to see Harry Potter and, and they have to see Harry Potter. So you're like, well, I guess I'm spending $1,000 plus on these tickets. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of criticism... Of that is because Harry Potter, they kind of Luke Skywalker him a little bit because they're like, well, he's just a dad and he's and he's sad and whatever. He's not. It's like, well, yeah, because he's fucking thirty five now. You know, that's why <laughs> the saddest he, age yeah, there is. Yeah, that's right. I know because he's had a hard, horrible life. Yeah, right. And he's just trying to like, what do you think he's gonna be? Anyway, I yes. I, I think it's good. A lot of people don't like it, but I think it's good. All right. Yeah. Should so, I read the book? The well, you've got to read the other ones. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you've got to know point. how they end first. Like, yes. All right. All right. I'll continue to watch them. All right. Fine. Great. Yeah. You could definitely go off the movies and. But I mean, I, I sort of know how the the movies end. Yeah. Harry dies, right? Yeah, for a bit. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say. I said that as a joke, but then I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he does kind of die. In the, yeah. In the, yeah. Good for a stuff. Yeah. Uh, I also have been reading the Jeff Lemire Hit, Hit Girl run. It's two issues in. Oh, they, did, right. they did a series previous to this, a new one, which I thought was good. I was not aware this existed. Yeah, but I really like the new one. This is Hit Girl. Hit this Girl, is, yeah, this yeah. is of, of the Kick-Ass universe. Correct, yeah. Is it a prequel or a... It's a sequel. S- sequel, yeah. okay. But I, I, I quite like the last one, but I think this one's much better. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, it's Jeff Lemire. So. Did he write the previous one? No, I don't was, believe was so. Was that Mark Miller? I don't know. Ooh. It's not bad. Right. But this is better, as <laughs> okay. I've said. Yeah. All right. What is what? Is, what's happening with Hit Girl these uh, days? she's in the Canadian wilderness. So you know, it's a real Jeff Lemire situation. Yeah. Right. She fights a bear. Oh, there's some. There's snow and sadness. There's a lot of snow it. and sadness. Yeah. Right. I, he's great. And what's it's... she doing out in the wilderness? Hit Hitman jobs. Hit it's, Girl jobs. That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Is there any? Is there any kick-ass cameos or anything? No. Oh. Uh, in the previous run. She recruits another guy to be kick ass, and he's like, "I don't want to do this. You're an you're an insane person. I never uh-huh. wanted to do this ever, or whatever." Right. So yeah, is she still like twelve? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. Which I think works better than being twenty two. Yeah. Right. Because it uh-huh. feels. I don't know what it's, it's. No, that makes sense because that if if she's twelve, yeah, it's much easier for it to. Like, if she gets to, like, her 20s, mm. she'd be like, what am I doing? Yeah, what exactly. Is happening here? But if That's she's still a kid who's been raised to be this yeah. lunatic killer, yeah. then she's still like, well, this is the way life is. Yeah, This That's is it. what I do. Exactly. Cool. But do you know what it's time for now? Oh, is it time for letters? Yes. Oh, lucky I've got the letters then. That is lucky. The classic one was letters, oh, letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. <laughs> Very good, Mason. Very nice. Yeah, if you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter mm-hmm. or shoot a Gmail over to Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Shoot a Gmail. And then Mason will see that Gmail. And raise that Gmail. Whoa. Yeah, do you want to go right. first or do you want me to go first? Uh, I had one, but I've lost it, so go, go for your life. 
Who's Robes Harris? How do you think Marvel will handle Josh Brolin as Cable and Thanos now that they own Deadpool? Hey, we didn't talk about that in the news. The merger went through. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, recast Cable or make an exception. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I think it's, it'll be an exception situation. For sure, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the odds of them being... You can't being really th- tell that yeah. they're the same person. Yeah, and the odds of them being in the same room at the same time. Good? Slim. <sighs> yeah. Gr- there, there you go. That's crazy, Mason, that you would say uh, that. Yeah. But I mean, how much... We, we still don't know how much crossover there's going to be. No. I would say the, the, the crossover potential of Deadpool and the rest of... The Marvel Universe is pretty slim. Yeah, right, exactly. I don't think they're going to do his wacky shenanigans flying in and out and he's going to meet Captain America and Captain America's going to be like, I don't approve of this. Look, I don't know. I think <laughs> I think we should leave a I lot of the speculation. This. No, I get it. We, we, should get, we should save a lot of the speculation until Avengers 4 is finished and we know who's still left alive. All right, then. Because it's going to be difficult for him to get up in the face of Captain America of Captain America's dust. Are you telling people to stop sending us X-Men Avengers speculation? No, in terms I love of, them. I think okay, it's good. All yeah. right, okay. No, never Keep stop. it going. Never stop. What do you got, Mason? Oh, this is from Michael Ralston. I know him. This is this also could have gone, gone under what, what we read in. But, I don't uh, know him, just to be clear. Well, he, says, hey, he says, hey, CrossFit dad and walking Mr. Coyer advert. I do know so him. So you do know him, yeah. <laughs> Only your closest, closest friends know that you mad for CrossFit. Uh, yes. Netflix produces a lot of stuff. Wow, He's that's, not wrong. Yeah. One of their newest is Extinction. It's a movie. It's got Michael Pena, Lizzie Kaplan, Mike Coulter. Oh, yeah. I still think If that. you saw it, what did you think? I did I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's good, definitely worth a watch, better than previous sci-fi or fantasy movies from Netflix. But you like, hated it. Like Spectral Bright or Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, I mean, it's a low bar. Yeah, that is a very low bar. What's Spectral? I didn't see Spectral, but it appears to be... Some dudes in like armored costumes, and they're like some sort of supernatural special forces or something. Great, watch it. The best one is Annihilation. Yeah, by a long shot. But that wasn't produced. F- that was that was produced separately, and then it yes. went to Netflix. I think Only these are like here. Netflix I, I, produced. Yeah. So what was that one called? Extinction. Would you like to hear about it? Of course, I. Here's would. the thing. I watched. I watched it because I thought that it's got Michael Pena. You know, Good who's cast. from. from Ant Man and a whole bunch of other stuff. Lizzie Kaplan, who's in a lot of stuff, and Mike Colt, who's uh, Luke Cage. Yeah, great cast. Uh, I'm going to spoil this for everybody. I'm ready. So strap in. I'm All excited. Right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Michael Pena and Lizzie Kaplan are a married couple. They've got a couple of kids. Uh, it's a dream. It's a dream, right? You'd think so, but that dream's going to turn into a nightmare. Oh, okay, no. exactly, right? So uh, Michael Pena keeps having he he keeps having these weird dreams where. This light appears in the sky and then it's an alien spaceship and it starts blasting people in the streets. And they're like, oh no. And it's, How's the effects on that? Bad. Uh, and, <laughs> and then and there's, you know, people have to run from this, this invading alien army. And then he sees another, he has another dream where he and his wife are fighting in this post-apocalyptic city that's been destroyed or whatever. Cool. And the dreams are ruining his life. He can't get enough sleep. And so he's missing his kids' dance recitals or whatever is happening. And then... Uh, so then he, everybody thinks he's crazy. Does this, is this good at this point? You were like, no, it's this is interesting. Nothing really happens for about an hour okay, and it goes time. for 90 minutes. <laughs> okay. So anyway, wow. at about the f- 50 minute mark, yes. uh, everybody thinks he's crazy, but then he, a little bit, and then he, they go to a dinner party and then this bright light appears in the sky and there's an alien So spaceship. he tells people... He's, like, tell, he's told a couple of people. He tell, tells his wife and, and everybody's like, what the... And everybody else is like, he's a bit unbalanced. Mm. And then the, the light appears in the sky and there's an alien spaceship and it starts shooting people and they go on the run and they're like, oh no. And then the, the these like shock troops come down. They're like armored and they've got masks on and they're shooting at everybody and they're just gunning people down. Are they aliens? They're, they're, well, they're going on the run. You can't tell because they've got masks on. Right. But they, they look alien. Or is it just like, that's a man in a suit? Well, it definitely looks like a man in a suit. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, but they're aliens. They are aliens. No. But then <laughs> what happens is, what happens is they're, they're, right, they're, they're, they're all on the run from these aliens. Did I guess the twist from just your description of this? <laughs> are you ready? Go. I'm ready. No, okay, okay. Uh, no I'll, tell, I'll tell you the thing. Tell, you tell me if you No, no, wrong. did I? Are they men? Yes. Yeah. So anyway, what happens? It's not an invasion. No, it is an invasion. Ugh. That's the twist upon the twist. Okay. So basically, what happens is, and then uh, Michael Pena gets one of their guns and he rigs it so he can use because he can't use it because it's like biometric, whatever. And he rigs it so it does work. What and was his job in the real world? 
He's like an engineer who works for okay, an aerospace right, company or whatever. Course, yeah, yeah. Um, and then some of his friends appear and they have guns and they start shooting back at these alien guys. And it's like, what's, what's happening? And then his wife gets caught in the crossfire and she gets injured. She gets shot. And then they capture... Is he capped? Lynn. Very nice. Thank and you. And then they capture one of these alien guys, right? And then the guy takes off his mask and he's human and he can understand them, right? He can, he, and he can speak English. And then... And it's Russia. You're so close. Am I really? No, you're not close. <laughs> but basically, then uh, he takes off the mask. It's the Bulgarians. It's, oh my God, it's the Bulgarians. Uh, and, then he's, and then he's like, I can... Don't, don't kill me. I can save your wife. But you gotta, you gotta trust me. And then they go, him and the wife and the alien guy. They go to this, like a open another room, and then you, we they cut open Lizzie Kaplan, and she's a robot, and Michael <laughs> Pena's a robot, and his kids are robots, and it turns out everybody on Earth is a robot. <laughs> and what happened was that many years ago, many no. You're not taking this seriously, James. Many years ago, <laughs> humans created what? humans created synthetic humans, like robots, and they made them do menial jobs or whatever. Oh, they took over. And then there was a ro- there was a there was a robot uprising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep, yep. And then uh, there was a robot uprising, <laughs> and that's what he remembers is the, all the explosions and the shooting and the post-apocalyptic oh, society was, was what they did back in the day. But they wiped their memories. Well, then the humans left. Yeah. They, all the humans left to go to Mars or something. And then all then some of the robots had their memories wiped so they didn't have to remember what they did. And then they all continued to live on Earth. But some of them remembered? Some of them did remember. The ones that went, the ones that had the guns and came back, oh, they yeah. remembered. But then the humans that lived on Mars, their grandchildren were like, we're going to go back to Earth. And we're going to... Make Earth great again. Yes. And they're, they're like, we're going to go back and see what's up there. And then they just show up and start shooting. Because they're like... Our... It, it's, one of these, it's one of these ones where they clearly went, okay, we need the humans to look like aliens. So we're going to have to... Like, they're gonna, we have to make them seem like hostile aliens. Yeah. So, we, so we're going to have to figure out plot-wise how that's going to work. So it's like, our grandparents told us that you were violent murderers. So that's why we just came in and started shooting. That's the explanation for that. Great. And we didn't know what the, the atmosphere was like. Maybe we couldn't even breathe it. So that's why we wore Could full you just body. Said, this is armor. Yeah, right? But they didn't. They were but also <laughs> Don't you have a thing that says whether there's an atmosphere? Exactly. <laughs> if you can if You're you, on Mars. If you're on Mars and you have spaceships. <laughs> Anyway, it was really dumb. Well, I didn't guess the twist. You were close, I was, not co- was I? Yeah, kind of. No, I wasn't. All right. Uh, I'm, uh, anyway, Micah, thanks for writing in. I'm sorry I didn't like it, but it was <laughs> no good. So what's the ending? The ending is uh, then all the robots get on their own spaceship and they leave. Every robot. Apparently. <laughs> okay. We never see how many spaceships there are. So. Where does Michael Pena go? He also goes. But where? Just into space. Why can't they just live together? Humans and robots. Yeah. Well, it didn't work last time, did it? No, they were shooting each other. Yeah, they were shooting each other. Wow. Yeah. Well, that sounds great. I'm going to watch that as soon as this finishes. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to watch it again. No, it was bad. I've got one more tweet here from Jeff Polka. Ooh. Hey, Mr. Sunday Movies and Wikipedia Round. It's us. What do you call chicken parmas- parmesan? Is it a parma or a parmy? Is it a Sydney, Melbourne thing? It's a parma. It's a parma. It's a chicken parmigiana. So that's for people who don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a chicken... Uh, parmigiana. It's no, a no, no, no. What, yes, a schnitzel. It's a Thank chicken you. schnitzel, and then you put tomato Na- paste Napolanese. on it. Napoli sauce. <laughs> yeah. And then you put a slice of ham for some reason, and then like that cheese. Oven and then cheese. Yeah. I think they're vastly overrated. Wow. But... You've never had a good one, my friend. No, I have. I think because they're mostly not good. Oh, right. They're mostly... Okay. Av- <laughs> but it's also... It's safe. If you go to a pub... And you want something, they probably will do it's an okay job. It's the gold standard. If you, if you get one, it's a mm. good yardstick of a pub. Yeah. If I find a new pub, I order the chicken parmigiana. Yes. Just to see if they, if they can get that right, then I trust them with other stuff. If they can't get it right, I'm never What are you even back. doing with your life if yeah. you can't even get that right? Exactly. I prefer a chicken schnitzel with gravy. I don't like any of the extra stuff on it. You don't need it. It's like a slice of ham. What? If it's good ham, it works, but often it's bad ham. That's what I'm saying, Mason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't risk it. Never risk it. Never risk anything. But you've risked it oh, multiple constantly, times. All the yeah. time. Every single time. I think that's the show, though. I live on the edge. You do, don't you? Yeah. What do you think you should say at the end of the show? 
Oh, thanks everybody for listening. Number one, yes. sending us your questions about terrible Netflix movies and chicken parmigianas. We love that. We do. Uh, but uh, if you uh, like the show and you want to get in contact with us, you can find Don't. us. Don't. On- no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do. You can find us on Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. Yes. Uh, let's see, you can go to planetbroadcasting.com. Sign up to our newsletter. Please you go do. to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. We're in there. We, have we love, are in love, there. Love, love having a chat. Every day we're in there. You can follow at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. That's our friend Rob Collins. That's right. That's Does right. a great job on the newsletter and the website and the group. Yes. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and also I'm on Instagram I'm somewhere. At, that's true. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter and Instagram, Mr. Sunday Graham. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Yes. If you want to chuck in a buck. If you want to. Uh, let's see. You can uh, go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description if you want to buy some, if you want to buy all the Harry Potter books and movies on DVD and Blu ray and book form. If you want to buy them in book form. They've got a new hardcover like, uh, uh, edition of the, of the books and they're bring, releasing them and they've got pictures. Are oh, they illustrated? Yes, yeah, I, so I think I'm going to yeah. get them. Very nice. Yeah. Um, uh, you can do that and we get a kickback if you do it through our Amazon affiliate link. Correct, correct. Uh, we've also got below. t-shirts on tpublic.com. Yes. Thank you. Which is linked the, below also. Thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, 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 Thank you for people who subscribe and rate on iTunes and, and tell various, a friend. Uh, and That's yeah, how that happens. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, uh, there's a Discord server. A lot of people have messaged me. They said, hey, that. we've got an official Weekly Planet and Planet Broadcasting Discord server. We'd highly recommend you check that out, even though we don't know what Discord is. We have is. no idea what we, it is. We could have looked it up, but we didn't. Yeah. I think it's probably music related. What do I, you think? I agree. Yeah. Or disagree. Could I be think... Vi- could be video games. Whatever it is, that's what I think it is. Huh. Yeah. You've really, you've hedged your bets there somehow. I don't think so. I think it's brave. You meant to say brave, basically. <laughs> I did mean it, yeah. Now, next uh-huh. week, uh, we're going to try and see the Meg, but it's not out here now. But the thing is, it is showing on Monday night. So next week's episode might be a little bit late if we record after we see the Meg on Monday night, if right, we decide okay. to do uh-huh. that. Yeah. But that's up in the air at this point. Or alternately, mm. what we what we can do is we will if you're if you're planning on seeing the Meg out there, yeah. Follow us on Twitter. Yes. And if we don't see the Meg, don't see the Meg with us. Yes, exactly. So if you're yeah. in line, if you've bought your tickets and you're going into the cinema, see the Meg. Check your Twitter yep. first. And if it says we haven't seen the Meg Or ask us if we've seen the Meg. You ask us if we've seen the Meg. If we haven't, you tear up those tickets, you yeah, leave. Absolutely. Yeah, you run, you never look back. Even though we'll, if we see it on Monday night, we won't have seen the Meg. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's already of the weekend. That's probably true. But that's the rules. Mm-hmm. All right. That, thanks, everybody. Have a good time. All right. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.